Today we have a wonderful podcast with Wendy Slatcher. We were lucky enough to be invited to to Wendy's home for this podcast and we had a, a fascinating and very long discussion on both Afghan hounds and the history of dog showing in this country. Yeah, well this is the, f- the first time that we've uprooted the uh, podcast gear and we uh, we took it out to Wendy's place and set it all up there. So this is our first face-to-face podcast and I think, you, would you agree, babe, that yeah. it was... It was it was awesome. It made a, it made a difference, I think. So I think it's something that we're going to try and do more because um, I think the, probably the conversation flows a little bit better. Um, I think up to now we've had a we've had some um, like delays in phone calls and in, in, in yeah. transmission and things like that. So this was really good. Uh, Wendy also fed us with champagne, which um, I think that helped a lot. I enjoyed that bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, listen, this was. For me, this was a really, a really special uh, discussion. Being able to, to sit down and, and focus our discussion on um, with somebody who's been around Afghan hounds for so long and has so much knowledge about the breed. Yeah, it's basically like a, a history lesson on both Afghans and uh, and dog showing. Um, I found it absolutely fascinating. And sitting in her, in her home, surrounded by beautiful artwork of of Afghans, which she. Um, she spoke of during the podcast, so she was able to point out a few dogs for us um, as she was speaking, which was which was fascinating. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, listen, I think it's a, an important podcast. Whether you're just you're an Afghan hound enthusiast or or you want to learn more about the history of dog shows in Australia, you know, I, I think you'll get a lot out of this. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy. Just a quick note, uh, Wendy wanted us to make special mention of all the founding Afghan hound breeders in this country. She mentioned uh, many during the podcast. Unfortunately, she didn't uh, mention uh, everybody uh, and she, she felt a bit bad about that. So um, this is us just sending a shout out to, to everybody who, um, all the founding breeders who contributed to this great breed in, the con- in this country. Um, so yeah, uh, enjoy the podcast and uh, thank you. So paranoid about you having a yes, yeah. Yeah. Imagine doing I do that <laughs> when I'm judging and using a dictating machine. Yeah. I'm absolutely terrified it's not recording. Yep. Yeah. Because you think, what if you get to the end and you go to type up your yep. critique and it's and absolutely there. nothing there? <laughs> oh, I, oh, I think yeah. it's happened before in Stafford's because um, we've heard later that they've needed to see photos to then write the critique. Yes, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it's easy to do. It's so yeah. easy for it to happen. You yeah. think you're right, yeah. but you're rushing and you're getting to the next class and stuff yeah. and then you get a whole blank. You know, you didn't get the whole of the junior dogs or something. Yeah. And, you're like, oh. and you're like, I'll never capture that magic again. Terrifies me. <laughs> right? Terrifies me. Yeah, you're like, I can't believe how well I, I, I spoke that critique. Yeah, exactly. You know, I love that dog. And yeah, know. yeah. And then you do have to say, please, can I see a photo of this dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the same, is it? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Well, just on that, um, you know, you, I, we ultimately want to start from the beginning. Um, we did our research. You first started in like 1962. And I, one of the first things that come to my mind was whether you are one of the, if not the longest running prefixes in Australia. Uh, one of them, yes. Yeah. Um, Barbara was before me and Helen was before me. Barbara Marsh? Uh, Skilton. Right, right. Okay, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Sorry, d- Barbara Marsh. Just, <laughs> you know, just keeping t- yeah, yeah. making it simple. Yeah. Barbara and Helen were both before me. Mm. And then there were several others at the same time that are no longer yep. recognisably active. Yep. Um, you know, Barbara hasn't bred Afghans now for a long time, but she's always associated with them. Absolutely. And the same with Helen. Helen yeah, yeah. hasn't been active since what, one of those litters recently yeah. that she was involved in. Yeah. But she herself hasn't actually been active for a long time. But you talk Afghans of that era and you automatically talk Barbara and then Helen yep. and then us. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And there were others, but they dropped out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I guess the, the big question is what, what drew, drew you to Afghans? Um, I think I think basically <laughs> I'm a gypsy at heart. Um, they're exotic, yeah. they're primitive, yeah. they're very special. Um, no other breed standard comes close to requiring such the detail. detail. Yep. Yep. And I was in England. Um, I was very lucky and I was chosen by BOAC to go to England with uh, seven other Australian girls. Yep. They wanted Australians on the Sydney-Singapore sector because yep. BOAC always had a local girl on each sector mm-hmm. and they decided to have the Australians. 
And I happened to be in England at Crufts' time, although at the time I knew nothing about it. And um, there was a lot of um, publicity about Crufts yep. and there were some photos of Afghan hounds at Crufts and one of them was with Marion Faithful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I sort of wrote back to Stuart and said, I want one of these sometime when I come back to Australia. And I got that one in 1962. Yeah. That was Christmas, our first year we were married. Wow. And that was 1962. And that was um, a Ferbari. Right. And that was um, then subsequently, Barbara, as I said, was very prominent. And I liked what she was doing, especially with the Dutch lines and her old line. And Philip Mulhall, do you know Philip Mulhall? No. Well, his prefix is, was Sforzy, S F O R Z Y. Yep. Philip was um, very active in Afghans at that stage, still around. He's a life member. Yeah. And um, he Im- imported um, a bitch with Barbara mm-hmm. from, uh, a, well, uh, a Kandahar, Arjman Brandman Kandahar daughter. She, he brought out to Australia with Barbara. And his arrangements with her was that he would get a dog puppy and a bitch puppy back from her first litter. Yep. And without any planning at all, they both finished up with me. So I had Jabba Bira was the dog and then subsequently... Um, the bitch came to me, Jawsa, and, you know, it wasn't intentional. It's just how it happened. So I'd started with a Ferbari. Next, sort of next Im- input was the Eltazis via Barbara, via Kanahar, and then very much via Badin when she brought the VDOMs in. But in the meantime, we got um, Amy Rawazadira from Joyce and Lester Davey mm-hmm. in Mildura at the time, and they had brought out Tara Barbara of Carloway. And they had an English line bred bitch here um, and they had a super litter and I wanted a bitch puppy by then and Helen took the dog main dog puppy tar- and um, she said, you know, do you guys want the bitch? Because she was in touch with the Davies and they want the bitch in Sydney to be shown, et cetera, et cetera, and she yeah. vouched for us. Subsequently, many years later, we never even spoke for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but she vouched for us and we got a Wazadira from the Davies for free but she had – to go back to them for her first litter, right? which it turned out was to Mazari of Carloway because in the meantime David had brought in Mazari mm-hmm. and Joyce had organised the mating and so we drove to Adelaide and and we bred a Wazadira and we bred what was called the Amy B litter, which were really fabulous. In the meantime, again, Joyce Davey, who was just an amazing person, she decided that we needed some grandeur to come into Australia and through Stephanie Hunt Crowley, she brought in Amy Regraydorn and he lived with us. That mm. was the arrangement that she'd bring him in but he would live with us in Sydney. Mm. And that's how Cammy came in. Yeah. Barbara had a link to Sher Khan through the Arjman bitch, which we picked up. Um, Cammy was a great-grandson of Sher Khan, which we picked wow. up way ahead of his time. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, even now he'd probably be fairly un- unacceptable because he... He wasn't – he didn't fit the mould at all at the time. Mm. Um, and then while she was – we brought Cammy in and at the same time I'd written to um, Kay Finch who'd mated um, Charikar Wazir – no, she'd mated um, Mr Universe to a Dutch bred bitch who happened to be the little sister of Barbara's Bedin. Right. And she'd mated to Barty and she missed – but and he died before she could be mated again. But she then mated him to Charikawazia, and that brought in all the Swedish stuff here, which was not here at all. So we brought in Dutchie yeah. as well, and then they were like chalk and cheese. I mean, you, if you look at them up there, sometime when before you leave, you can see they were just chalk and cheese, yeah. Cammy yeah. and Dutch. They were just the opposite sides yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah. But we put their daughters across each sire, and never looked back. You no, know, it was. A perfect thing to do. Right. But I, one time we were in the States and Bo Bengtson, we were on the same judging panel, we were having breakfast and Bo said, whatever made you people put those two yeah. male lines together? Whatever made you think it would work? Why did you do it? Yeah. And as we said then, um, Australia then, we were geographically isolated. Yes. We were buying dogs on those little blue aerograms yeah. with the red stripes down the side. Yeah. There was nothing. No technology, there was nothing at all. Yeah. If you got a photo on a box brownie, yeah. which Stephanie Hunt Crowley took of Amy Regraydorn yeah. before he came out, you were lucky. Mm. But you know? how, how would you, like, I'm so, we're also, um, I guess, used to instant communication anywhere in the world now, right? And we can send video, photos, yes. we can instantly chat. Yeah. Like, we've got to take ourselves back 
what's that, nearly 60 years ago. Literally. <laughs> right? Yep. When, you know, it's all telephone. We didn't have, not probably didn't even have fax machines and things like that. It was no just mail. machines. Oh. Mail oh, yeah. and telephones. And we hardly ever made a phone call. Yep. Because they were shockingly expensive and yes. we were still on the on the cable. Oh, of course, overseas, to, back yeah. then, to yeah. And stuff, you know, we had to go that way. Yeah. Um, we, um, as I said, we basically bought dogs on these little blue aerograms that you bought from the post office, very thin, very lightweight. Yeah. And you wrote on those, they had little red stripes down the side. Right. And you wrote on those and you wrote to somebody and you said, oh, hey, my name oh. is. And I think I'm interested in what yeah. you're doing and where's that going to go and when is it going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd like to buy a puppy. And it was all just trust. So would that yes. go on the in in the mail or yes, that yeah? Mail. So then you mail. you send this letter, yep. you wait it goes. weeks yep. and weeks, yes. and you go and check the mailbox Absolutely. every day in the hope that you Absolutely. get this letter back. And in those days, we got mail on Saturdays, mm-hmm. and we lived at West Pennant Hills in yep. our marvelous place at West Pennant Hills. And I can remember walking up to the mailbox one Saturday, and getting this thing from Joyce Davy yep. in Adelaide. Uh, ordinary mail, not air mail, because it was only Adelaide. Yeah. And she said, you know, I've just arranged to buy this black Granger bred wow. dog, mm-hmm. but I want him to live with you in Sydney. As, you know, are you interested? Will you have him? And I can remember walking back down to the skipping, house. Skipping, skipping back yes, to the house. Yes, down to the house <laughs> saying, saying to Stuart, my goodness, yeah. look what we're going to have come and live with us. Wow. And Joyce was terrific. She knew, she understood, she could predict yeah. where the breed should go. Yeah. And he took then he came out on the boat on a P and O boat. They came out in the boats. Wow! Um, and he came out with Peter Warby. Right. Peter Warby saw him in England as wow. a puppy. He went and met Stephanie and said hello and blah blah. And he came out. It took seven weeks on the boats to come out. Wow! And they had little cabins built up on the little wow. kennels built up on the yeah. on the deck. Yeah. And of course the dogs got salt water and stuff mm. in them. Of course. Them. They got real mess and their coats were dreadful. Coat was like oh, shocking. Came off. Yeah. And he being he was a black dilute, and when, by the time he got here, he was like dead brown. Oh. <laughs> Looked like a Chesapeake Bay colour. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that was Cammy. So you know, Peter brought him out on the boat. For wow! Us. And you would go what into Sydney and pick him up from the boat? I had to go to quarantine still. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. So we went in to meet him on the boat. And, and how long was quarantine back then? Um, I think then it was. I'm just trying to think. I think it was. Very short then because they'd done seven weeks. So they'd yep. done two months right. of their quarantine. Yep. Yep. And subsequently it went very high. By mm-hmm. the time we brought Eagle in, that one, um, oh, wow. he came by Hawaii because we thought, wow, suddenly we were allowed. The others had to go to England. You couldn't bring them anywhere but 12 months in England from anywhere in the world. Oh, really? 12 months in England before they could come to so us. So England was the trusted site. Well, it was, <laughs> yes, rabies free, you see. It was wow. the only one that was that right. they could come in here. I had to go to England first. And um, by the time Eagle came um, from the West Coast, they lifted the – we could come through quarantine in Hawaii, mm. but they had to do – we were seven months here if they came from England by then. If they came from Hawaii, they could come, but they had to do nine months. And we brought him. He was the first one to come through Hawaii. Wow. Of course, we thought it was a better climate for him. Yeah. You know, we put Dutchie – Cammy was born in England – Flying Dutchman, we put him into England for 12 months. So he went from California to a very miserable, cold, boarding, horrible quarantine kennel in the north of England. You don't know. You think they yep. sound all right, and it did sound all right. It was awful. Because yeah. we subsequently got to visit it um, long after he came out. And, um, they, you know, they such a shock to the system and the yeah. climate shocking. And yeah. So by the time we could bring West Coast dogs through Hawaii, he was the first one to come through. Wow. Which was... Marvellous. And looking at him, he could be a dog that was he would bred st- today. He would. He would still yeah. bred today. He is, like that head is stunning. American-sized dog. He was just on 28 and when he stood up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, he was the original American-sized dog, so he was a little bit, in his time here, he was a little bit overwhelmed because they yeah. were all bigger dogs, especially right. the English lines were very big, upstanding males. Yeah. Uh, but he would win for type still. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like the, the, he, the detail and the chiseling in his oh, head. He was like, a beautiful dog. Yeah. He was magnificent angulation and a fabulous right. top line and fabulous croup and fabulous wing tail and sweet, sweet dog. Mm. Um, both, well, Dutchie was very, you know, video where I'm, I'm, I'm the king of dogs, mm-hmm. which we wanted. Mm-hmm. Cammy was very in between, Amy or Grey Dawn. He was yeah. a very laid back dog, nothing worried him. But Eagle was an absolute mm. charmer. Mm-hmm. Mm. He was so sweet. 
and uh, people like Colleen and, um, you know, John and Ian and all yeah. that era. Um, Jamie Green, David Green, I have to remember to keep calling him David because I still call him Jamie because right. he was Jamie in those days. And um, that's when Colleen bred her um, dog that um, went to Sweden who was by Dallas from Magnolia, and, and Magnolia was um, Cadbury Hill after image and Eagle, and no, Cadbury Hill Crash and Philip William Eagle, and so that whole line went to Scandinavia then via Colleen's lovely stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's still there. Wow. Very, very prominent still in the Scandinavian line. So, so going back to those days, um, how was the, I guess, the camaraderie between the Brit? Like it sounds like you're building a foundation and you needed to work together. We to did. It was absolutely fierce. It really was? Really seriously yeah. fierce. Right. But everybody did work together. Yeah. You know, um, because we had to. The geographic, yeah. you know, this is what Mo said, why did you think you could do this? Yeah. And I said, well, you know, the geographical isolation of Australia you in just, those days yeah. and the time it took to bring a dog out here yeah. and the time it had to spend in quarantine, we had to work together. Yeah. We couldn't all afford to import what we particularly liked. Yeah. But we had to be able to utilise it once it got here. Yeah. Because, you know, I couldn't turn around and bring in what Helen brought in and she couldn't turn around and bring in what Barbara brought in. Yeah. And they didn't turn around and bring in what I brought in. Yeah. So we had to work together. But the competition was fierce. Yeah. Right. Really so it was, a, it was a dynamic that you would assist each other to breed better dogs but come, I guess, showtime and, and breeding the better Absolutely. dog, it was fierce. Yes. So, fierce. Yeah. yeah. And I always laugh and Helen will forgive me because she knows I laugh at this story. I wanted to use – I put Kusan, um, runner-up best in show, very early and he just arrived here and I thought he was a fabulous dog and I loved him. And I wanted to put – to use him. And I wanted to put Mosk to him who had six Royal Challengers and an opposite section show at Brisbane Royal. And I wanted to put Inca, I think, who was by Quetzal. And she had nine all breeds best in shows. And in those days, you know, they were big deal because she got through a breed entry of 300 to get into the group. And Helen refused my bitches, but she accepted from um, Narelle Coombs, Campari, Kalahora Campari, Campari, who was was out of Mosque's mother's little sister by Duchy. So she accepted her. Yeah. And she accepted Turban. Who is, of course, Ros Bassich's stuff's all based on Turban, the Corey's owned her. She accepted Turban, and that was by Amy of Grey Dawn from the same mother as Mosk, who was the little sister of the mother of Campari. And she accepted both of those, but she wouldn't let me use either the dog on either of the bitches. And we laugh about it. Yeah. And Helen has a story. No, no, Wendy, you ask at the wrong time, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was just overseas or I was up at the farm or my granddaughter was great. You know, we laugh about it now. Yeah. But yeah. that is a fact. She accepted yeah. Campari yeah. and she accepted Turban and she turned down Mosque and she turned down Inca. <laughs> and it was quite, like, ridiculous. Yeah. But it happened. I mean, because yeah. that was the level of the competition. Yeah. Yeah. And she used Ishmael as well, who Wayne Burton and Wayne and Ros owned Ishmael. Yep. And she used Ishmael on um, Forbins, I think. No, 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 earlier than that. And um, that produced Colleen's Teresa, Ferrari right. Teresa, yeah. yep. who had a, you know, a Kalahora sire and a Ferrari mother. And that was the background of everything for Colleen. Right. And it's funny, I've got this funny little yellow blue person from my new boy, yeah, and she's what the Americans call root beer colour and I call them caramel blues and she's a really strange, strange colour. Yeah. And when Colleen bought Teresa from Helen, they look like golds. And when she bought Teresa from Helen, she thought she'd bought a golden Afghan hound. And, of course, she just diluted out more and more and more and became a most beautiful blue. Wow. But we always laugh about it because yeah. Colleen – and she probably would say now she didn't because she doesn't like me anymore – but she would probably say, I didn't do it. But she did. She thought she'd bought a golden Afghan hound. Yeah. And she'd bought the most exquisite dilute blue. Yeah. That's behind all her coloured lines. Yeah. So, I mean, we did cooperate. Yeah. But not necessarily one-on-one. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. There was often a generation involved. I find, um, so in my background in Stafford's, right, it, yes. was, it was always never – Never judge a dog by its colour. Oh, and absolutely, was, in Stafford's. Yeah, oh. yeah. So, But then coming into Afghans, it was so weird that colour was such a topic of conversation. And I'd never had the – I'd always, like, 
no, I'm not going to be colour blind or anything like that. You've got to look past the colour at all times sure. and look for the dog and all that sort yeah. of stuff. But now um, I do look at it as an extra part of the dog. All right, so it's, okay, the dog can be great, but it can also add to the dog sure. if it is a stunning colour. Sure. You know, and it's, I really I enjoy these conversations about colour because yes. you can have that great dog, but you can have um, an even greater dog if the colour yes. accentuates yes. its virtues and we and didn't have like a lot of colour in those days. Mm. And um, we had all the, the golds and silvers, all my um, Crown Crest Americans and my Scandinavians and, and my Tarababa and Caraway, all that stuff was gold. Yep. We occasionally got black and tans. Um, they were never popular. People didn't like them. Yeah. Um, Barbara had them always because the bit she brought in that I had the puppy had a Jabra and, and Jaws from, she was a black and tan. Yeah. Um, and you might have to edit these sort of things. Yeah. Barbara used um, Jabba Vera that which, she Which we weren't. <laughs> no, I'm, jo- I'm joking. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm but jo- you need to... <laughs> Wendy, I'm joking. No, I'm no, joking. but I mean, you just need to <laughs> yeah. listen because yeah. it's a little bit right. pricey. Oh, okay. Um, she, um, she used Jabba Vera for his first litter. She yeah. bred him and she used him, which was fine. That was the arrangement. And she had um, six black and tans and four gold. Yep. Black mask. A friend of mine, Lorraine Hilda, had a Swarzy from Philip Mulhall. Right. Little plain, red, very functional little bitch. She didn't ever title in the show ring, but she was the probably the first CD Afghan hound in Australia, Swarzy Swahili. And then she had, came to me, and from my Awazadira to Mazari litter, she got, uh, it was it Amy Litter? She had um, Amy, heavens above, whatever her name is, I'll have to think. And so she had the line sort of all happening and she was a Doberman breeder. Mm-hmm. And when this happened with, she, with Jarvis babies, with Barbara, she said, oh, I've got stars in milk, puppies are nearly weaned, she'll come back to milk, I'll hand rear and if Barbara will let me. Because that's how close it all was. Everybody mm. knew what everybody had. Mm. And um, Barbara says, oh, gosh, yes, she's welcome to. If she wants to, she's very welcome. Um, and Lorraine went, and I'm sure it was six, Doberman read them and they were all fabulous. And then Lorraine had her choice um, of a black and tan and she took Maha Praja Party or Tazi Maha Praja Party, or oh, that's her daughter, but I think that's the one she took, and... It was a bit of a joke because she turned out to be fabulous mm-hmm. and she won and she won and she won and black and tan yeah. and she won. And, of course, Barbara said, oh, no, 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 I gave that one specifically because I knew it was the best and I knew that's the one that Lorraine would choose and I knew that's the one that would go on, mm-hmm. which was quite yeah. – at the time yeah. we were all a bit, you know, yeah. oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but they did go on. The whole litter went on. Yeah. And, you know, Jan Williams. Yes. Um, well, Jan was involved with Barbara – um, Margaret Snelling with Barbara and Margaret Snelling had the pick dog out of that litter. Right. And that's where, where she went on for right. always. So and Jan used to handle it when she was about 16. Mm. So did that litter help promote Black and Tans? Tremendously. Wow. Tremendously because Jarba was already a best in show winner. So thanks to a Doberman and, breeder. And Lorraine did heaps of winning with yeah. that. Mm. And then from that she bred a dog called Alsace the Fallen Angel. Beautiful Black and Tan, like Knock your socks off, yep. like and, yep. and he was a bit shy, and a lot were in those days. And he wouldn't always put his tail up; he was a bit of a pain in the backside. Right. Um, but he was beautiful. Yeah, and he won the breed and the group at a Powell International at the old Sydney show rings in the cattle rings when we used to have the Powell there and the old grounds and yep. the cattle rings in the pavilions. And he won the breed and beat my mosque. <laughs> and won From an entry group, of 300, oh, right? <laughs> yeah, and won the group under the um, wow. Maharaja of Maria. Oh, you serious? Who was a desperately devoted Afghan person because wow. he'd grown up in India. His blood brother was um, Prince um, Thing in a minute and they grew up because they used to swap their sons. So he grew up in Pakistan and the, the Pakistani prince grew up in India mm-hmm. uh, just when the petition occurred. So they swapped their sons and they wow. both dog people. Yeah. Fabulous dog people. And very much, you know, in the British Raj, this is what we did. Yeah. And, you know, their fathers owned 20 Labradors from the top kennels in England and they that they shot over and on the tiger hunts. And, oh, yeah. Unbelievable wow. stuff. Unbelievable stuff. And he was great. Yeah. And he put he put him through with his tail half up. But 
He knew Loved enough to so say, much. well, yeah. and as I always say, especially with Afghans, with all show dogs, but especially with Afghans, they just have to tolerate the judge. They don't have to like them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm very anti all this baiting now, of course, and the tail wagging. I agree. I agree. Lack of dignity I agree. and you know, lack of alertness. I, and, you know, I hate all this now. I would never take even bait in the ring. No, I, don't, I, I just don't, I don't agree I, with I, it. And in our days you weren't allowed to. Right. And you weren't even allowed to take a brush in the ring. Had a oh, see, that would kill me. Break- <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. But we had a huge breakthrough at Sydney Royal one year and they permitted the Afghan hound people to take... Are you serious? Wow. And that was the first time ever yeah, like a brush well, was allowed. Yes. You couldn't take any grooming equipment mm-hmm. into the ring and you certainly couldn't take bait in wow, any breed in those wow. days. And Afghans were the first to have... They were the first to get permission a brush. in the ring to have a brush in the ring. And what year do you remember? Oh, gosh, I don't. No? No, I don't remember. It was way back before... Turban, yeah. she was our first Sydney Royal Best yeah. in Show and it was probably five years before that. Wow. But I don't remember the year, but I do remember. Yeah. Wow. And everybody had their brushes tucked into the yeah. back of their trousers. Yeah. And nobody knew what to do with the brush anyway. You know, yeah. what do I do with the brush? I'm in the ring with a brush. <laughs> don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and no way would you hold up the judging to brush it oh all my around. God. You wouldn't do any of that. You're just like you're in there, but you had your brush because you were out there. Hilarious. Yeah. And was it like a campaign to get a brush? <laughs> yes, to, yeah? yes, yes. I can, the Afghan people, because um, we had a really strong club in those days, yeah. and the Afghan people had petitioned. Wow. And, of course, the poodle people, everybody else, Shih Tzus, and everybody wanted yes. to do yeah. it. But we were a really moving and shaking bread club in those days. Because the entries were so large. Yeah, massive. Yeah. And see, at the Royal in those days, we had one day for dogs and one day for bitches. Wow. Because they'd be in excess of the 300 and they couldn't do more wow. than 300 in a well, day. Well, Afghans like one of the, the largest sort of breed yes, entries always, out of all breeds? always, always. That's Afghans incredible. and Irish setters, they both wow. used to draw in excess of yeah. 300. Um and as I said, we got to the stage we had to have a day for dogs and a day for bitches because yeah. no judge could get through the entry. Yeah. And then we had it at the Albreed shows, the same thing. Wow. We'd have a judge for dogs and a judge for bitches or we would have a judge purely doing Afghan hounds yeah. and the best of breed go into the group. And almost always the group was waiting for the Afghan winner to go in because they had such yeah. a massive number of dogs to get through and the rest of the group was through a lot quicker. Yeah. So they were nearly always waiting for the wow. Afghan to go in. And then that would give the Afghan, I guess, um, after beating 300. Probably a huge advantage. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they were big, massive winners in those days. Yeah. When we came into it, you couldn't win a class in group with anything if you weren't a dachshund. All the dachshunds. What? <laughs> Are you serious? They absolutely did. They were fabulous. Wow. They were so good. And they were every variety. And they were so strong. Because I love that bread. And seven, like, oh, so do I. Yeah. All of them, especially yeah. the standard wires. I was about to <laughs> say the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I, I think had they're one, phenomenal. I'd for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you ever get to Scandinavia and you see the standard wires, right. you will be yeah. gobsmacked. Yeah. They're yeah. Just, just these proud dogs. Oh, they're unbelievable. Yeah. And they're still, because it's FCI, they're still very functional little dogs. They're yeah. s- absolutely sound. And they're small because they'll go down the barrow and they'll take on the right. burrow and they'll take on the badgers, you know, they're yeah. correct size yeah. and they're so full of themselves. And the major kennel, I don't know what it is now, but the major kennel over there years ago and their prefix was freckle face. <laughs> and how gorgeous is that? That's Isn't that really beautiful? Cool. And yeah. they had all these little yeah. ginger, little whiskers and little freckles and scruffy <laughs> Beautiful yeah, little scruffy gorgeous. dogs. Yeah, 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 gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is hilarious. Like it's not easy to me on a topic. Nah, listen, Wendy, I'm, I'm having the time of my life. I love it. <laughs> I'm not good at well, on the topic. Let me, let me pour and you yes, keep talking. Because um, I'm honestly thinking, like, this is a history lesson. This is an Afghan history lesson. Uh, yeah, it, uh, and I'm sorry I'm not coming up immediately with some names. I do yeah. know them. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> the names are not there's a, there's a lot there, though. You know, just so many but names. But I can check them if we need them. I mean, yeah. I'm not, they're there. <laughs> And I know, you know, three three years ago, I could have given you four generations on any dog I'm talking about, mine or anyone else's. But now it's (laughs) it's more the what you guys had to go through to build the Mm. breed here. Absolutely, and you know, we hardly showed interstate in those days. Mm. Um, Initially, when Barbara first was active before Helen, you were a state champion. Right. So Barbara lived in Tasmania. Oh. She had lived in Western Australia. Then she'd moved to Tasmania. Then she moved to uh, Sydney. Yep. And her dogs were titled in each of those states. They carried separate titles. Wow. Yep. In my day yep. and in Helen's, they were just 
Australian champions. Yeah. Um, and we didn't travel much, but then we did. We started travelling for the Royals and the specialties, Brisbane, yeah. Adelaide and Melbourne always. Yeah. But you didn't. You know, you had Lynette Schilling, in, and that's another very active prefix. She's not doing Afghans for many years. But Lynette Schilling in, with Shaltara in Victoria yep. was a really strong presence. Mm-hmm. And she's still around. Yeah. So, you know, she's got to come into that equation. That although she mm-hmm. hasn't done Afghans for longer than... Much longer than Helen and probably longer than Barbara. She hasn't done Afghans, but she was a really strong kennel and a really big force yeah. to be recognised yeah. and brought a lot of imported dogs in that were very important. Um, how, just, just on that, back on that quickly, like importing dogs, like how expensive was it back then? It was terribly expensive for the money we had, but yeah. peanuts compared to now. No, but you can't. You can only no. compare it to where yes. you were at. And it what, was very you know. expensive then for so, where we were at. I mean, Stuart was earning three pounds seven shillings and sixpence when yeah. he graduated in pharmacy. Yeah. And and as it happened, um, Lester Davy was a pharmacist as well in Mildura. So when they brought in their dogs, and of course David brought in everything that was unbelievably fabulous for the breed and made it available. He was just incredible. Yep. Um, so, yes, for what we were earning, it was very expensive. Yeah. Couldn't give you any clue what it actually cost. So what drove you, though? Like, it, considering the, um, um, you know, you've had to put so much money in, you it, it's fiercely competitive, um, you don't really have access to, like, social media like you do now nothing, to, to no. share photos no, and nothing, information. Nothing. and it's You had to really do your research, yeah. which I think was very valuable. Because you had to do your pedigrees. Yep. Now, I brought in Amy Gray Dawn, Flying Dutchman, Isfahan. Neither of them were show quality. Right. This country right. was already ahead of them in quality. Wow. The, the show ring. Yeah. But they carried lines that went forever back. Yep. Um, would breed on. Yeah. Would fit in with what I'd already managed to get hold of. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they came as stud dogs. Um, that was the thing. Yeah. I don't know what drove me, Luke. I mean, it's an addiction. <laughs> Yeah. Like anything yeah. else. Yeah. It's just like anything else. Yeah. You saw something, you maybe so, saw. There was the, the first Afghan journal in the world, I think, was the old hound's howl out of America. And there was a little thing, Ronio, you know, those awful purple, you don't probably, you're probably, you're probably much too young. But there was a thing called a Roneograph machine and it was horrible and it had shiny paper and it had purple ink and it smudged all the time. And that's how... Magazines in the world yeah. were produced in yeah. those days. Yeah. And there were these people in America, Ruth and her daughter was Sharon, I think, Weddell, and they produced this Hound's Howl. And if you're following what Rick Thing's doing, yeah. Rick, Rick, <laughs> America, Rick Thing, he's doing all these wonderful old magazines and he's reproducing them all and now I can't Oh, think. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Rick's doing yeah. Hound's Howl at the moment. Right. He's going back and reproducing those old American Radio right. things, and they were, you know, five pages or something, yeah, and a, and a cover and a drawing on the cover by yeah. somebody, and I mean, you waited for those to yeah. arrive. Yeah, yeah, ordinary yeah. mail, you just waited, and there'd be one in the letterbox, yeah. and oh my gosh, yeah. and then you'd see ads, and then you'd see bloodlines. Yeah, mm. well, it's even when I first um, started, when I first had Staffords, it was just before internet, yes, and it was all about subscribing to. Your club magazine, yeah, oh, and sure. and it was a quarterly magazine, yes. and I would hang out for it. Sure. And when it came, that was what you looked at for that next three months Absolutely. until the next. And back then, it was like you would stare at the ads and available at start, and I'd, yes. I'd look at the dogs in you know, and just in awe yes. and go, "Oh, these these are dogs that are good enough to be stud dogs, right? right?" Yeah. And yeah. and I can imagine it was the same back oh, then. Exactly you know? the same. Yeah. And certain lines attracted certain people. Yeah. And I, Crown Crest and Grandeur. In, from America and Carloway, particularly from England, always were what Stuart and I found yep. we were looking at. Yeah. Yep. If something turned up, we'd think it was going to be one of those. Yep. And, that's, and then VOM, of course, with Barbara. So that's the four lines. We brought wow. them all in from direct source. Yeah. All of them came in directly. Right. Um, but, but just, just Helen on that. didn't, you know, that didn't interest her. She brought in a totally different type. Really? Yeah, totally right. different type. She well, just she wanted to go her in, own way. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. she was ahead of us. I mean, my yeah. first dog was bred by her. Yeah. So she was way ahead of us so, in what she wanted to do. When you say ahead, what do, what do you mean by that? Um, well, she was already knowledgeable yeah. and committed. Do you mean, are you referring to like detail of the bread? Or like is she, was she looking for things that you guys just weren't weren't seeing at that point or... I'm trying Looking to understand for something different. Yeah, um, 
as I said, we laughed when the lines finally came together. Yeah. Um, she she had she had her vision. Yeah. And she was much closer to Lynette Schilling. They were on the yep. same wavelength of the same type of dog that yep. they wanted. Uh, lengthier dogs than I wanted. I wanted squarer dogs. She was happier with a bit more length. Yeah. Better shoulders, much better shoulders right. than I had. Okay. And um, they were both addicted to that. Yep. And they right. there what they were doing produced more length. Yep. So a different kind of movement. I yep. wanted a more arrogant dog, and yep. I wanted a more I own the ground, I tread on dog. Yep. I didn't want anything that could be angled and strangled and, you know, mm-hmm. moulded into this. I mm. wanted it's got to walk in, it's got to stand there, and yeah. the judge has got to say, wow. So we wanted something different. Yeah. Barbara was totally English originally right. in her because she'd come from there and yeah. she was very much into the old English Bletchingley line, which didn't appeal to me. Yeah. Um, and then she brought in the Argements and, and the stuff from Kandahar was back to Shurkhan, so that was interesting to me and I got the two of them straight away. And then, of course, she brought in all the fabulous Dutch stuff. But I already had that Dutch stuff because of Barty being Bedin's little sister and Barty being Dutch's mm-hmm. mother mm-hmm. in America. And I had Dutchy simply because I wanted, you know, I liked the look of that line and it was in America by then. It was sitting out of Holland and in America. So can we just pause on that? So I really want to go back to it, right? <laughs> but something that's burning at me and I really want to ask, I'm so interested to know um, that – You've, you've said you've brought a couple of stud dogs in that were not show quality, they were inferior to pretty much what you had, mm. but they had the lines you Love. wanted. And I really, I, this, this topic really interests me in that um, even though the dog that presents to you, it, it, it may not tr- throw what it is, but it may actually throw what's representative behind it. I'll confuse you totally. Turn around and look at the one at the top there. Yep. That's from Denmark. Yep. That's by the famous, wonderful Hastafer. Right. Who I had judged, and I'll tell you the story in a minute. Um, Lotta Jorgensen had a litter by him from Sweden, and there was quarantine, and she had a litter in Denmark by him, yep. and uh, by his father, by Hastafer. And then we went and met her and visited her and said we wanted a dog puppy from this litter, and she sent out William. Now, a lot of it was my fault because a lot of them had very heavy what I call Dutch heads, yep. and I said I wanted the best-headed – they were all beautiful. And I said I wanted the best-headed dog puppy in the litter. And that's Boxer Dan the Conqueror, William, and he came out and he had the most unbelievably beautiful, fabulous head. Really? But he was a raw, rangy, sort of primitive dog in yeah. very bare pastons fore and aft, yeah. which we were all anti there by right. then. We were you, were try- you wanted the coat. We were all right, the coat by right. Then. I only showed him twice. Um, he lost under somebody I really respected for primitive Afghan hounds. Yeah. And he lost under that person to a very modern Afghan hound. And I was very annoyed, to yeah. say the least. And I didn't ever show him again. Oh. Now, he was fantastic. But as he grew and I looked at him, he was nothing like Hastafer. Nothing yeah. like his fabulous father, who's the best dog I've ever seen. Mm. He was nothing like him. So I went back and I looked at the pedigree and I thought, you know, what, what went wrong? What happened? Yeah. And he was out of an Ilkama's bitch, which was really old Swedish blood and old video in blood, really old. And he was out of an Ilkama's bitch and he threw to his mother yeah. and wow. he produced to his mother. Wow. He never Just produced. ignored his dad. Yeah. <laughs> and his obviously dad was the best thing I've ever seen and wow. still is. And, I, and he... Never threw the Hastapa type. Wow. He threw the Ilkama's type. Mm. And I expected the Ilkiria's type. That's what I bought him for. You hoped? Yeah, that's why yeah. I bought him. I bought him for the Ilkiria type. Wow. And it was the Ilkiria lady who'd bought Presidium uh, that Colleen had sent over to Sweden. Yeah. Last morning to bed by John and Ian. But yeah. by Dallas, a Star Spangled Banner yeah. from My Magnolia. And, and Presidium changed the breed in Sweden. He was brilliant, wow. fabulous, wonderful dog. And he changed the breed. But I was trying to buy Elkiria's pre, yeah. the Australian input, because yeah. I didn't need it, and he threw to his mother all his life. No matter what I put him to, he mm. threw to his mother. Wow. So wow. that's a bit of a like, that's exactly yeah. the answer to what you're saying. But you that, that also um, is an example of um, having a strong damn line. For right or for wrong, well, you know. Of course it's for right <laughs> if you're a breeder. Yeah. Because breeders like Arabian horse breeders, we breed. Male, female. Yeah, that's how we breed. Yeah, but we bring these marvelous males in to change our world. You think it's going to, but <laughs> if, you, if it's not on a good, ah, ah. yeah, if it's not from a good foundation, you know. 
Yeah, that's right. Gonna... We well, see. I mean, Mosque and Turban are two of the most famous here, and they were both out of Barcarolle. Mm. Barcarolle was by Amy Barwalla, who was back through Masari when yeah. David first brought Masari in and went best in show at Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide Royal in the same year. Yeah. This Afghan that nobody could even believe this thing, and it went best in show at all three royals, and and hum- that was humble a brag. Line. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I still look. He he wouldn't win today. Why is um, that? Because he was reasonably uh, very high with a dog, yep. very primitive yeah. Afghan, yeah. high with a and rising up to the loin. Right. Those sorts of shaped Afghans don't have a lot of rear angulation. Right. Uh, and they have average shoulders. Yeah. And he had. Most fabulous head, yeah. but a scary head, full black mask, receding top knot. But don't you love that too, though? Oh, I, love, I mean, yeah. yeah. Like for me personally, like mm. the more exotic and the more detail, yeah, exactly. And like I love highly patterned Afghans. Yes, well, but, he was patterned. Yeah, and he was sabled. Yeah, he was a red, with heavy sabling all yeah. on his shoulders, all on his hips, all his ears, and this incredible yeah. black head, yeah. receding top knot. Um, and I upset David many years later. I was writing something, and I said that. He, his pet name was Astra and the other one was Wally Wog of Callaway and he was Wiggy and Wally Wog was textbook perfection but didn't have the personality, didn't have the presence, was that just X-factor. beautiful but I'm not, I wish I wasn't here. Not shy yeah. but I wish I wasn't here. Yeah. Yeah. And I wrote something once and I said about Astra, Mazzari, and how he just knocked everybody's socks off with winning those three royals. We'd never seen anything like him. Yeah. And David, of course, was a fabulous hand. Yeah. And he'd just walk the dog in and he would just stand there and the dog would go one, two, three, four and he'd just stand there. Everything, look at you and through you, gazing into the yeah. distance in memory of ages past, owns the grounds he treads on, yeah. Yeah. massive feet, bare pastures four and a half, these huge, fabulous feet, fabulous natural saddle, fabulous yeah. natural neck patches. Yeah. I mean, he was so exotic. Yeah. And as you say, and how was his movement? Brilliant. Yeah. But wouldn't be... Even impressive today because none of this open side gate California kickback, drop your head and move low to the ground. Yeah. None of this stuff. He yeah. just tread like yeah. How how yeah. important was David to the breed then? Incredible. Yeah. Beyond belief. Yeah. Because he brought in dogs nobody else could have convinced the breeders to let yes. them come here in the first place. Yes. If they did, nobody could have afforded them. Yes. And he brought them in and they were available for yeah. start. Right. I mean, he was amazing. Right. He just was absolutely an amazing person. And wasn't it the, the two big one, the two big winners he had that he initially brought in? Well, that was Wally Wog yeah. and Mazari. Yeah, and they, they were different Carloway. type, though, totally right? Different. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, Mazari was really primitive, really yeah. highly exotic, really arrogant. And I said this thing about this fabulous head, and I said, but people were scared of him because he looked like he'd take your hand off. So good. And <laughs> David, but David was really took yeah. me over on over it. I got a dreadful letter from David saying, you know, I've let you do this and I've let you do that and I can't believe what you've said. And people will always think that Mazari was vicious. No, and I never it's said It's a compliment from an Afghan what, person. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. But David got really annoyed with yeah. me. He was really upset with me about that. I had a, a, and Wiggy would just free you know, Wiggy would love you, but no personality. Mazari, Astra, froze you. You yeah. wouldn't think of putting your hand out to this dog. Yeah. Because he was a tribesman. Yeah. He was an Afghan. I had that with a judge um, after T1. I don't know, it was a CC or something like that. And when she was coming up to do the critique, she goes, I don't know whether to um, to, t- to touch her or run. Yeah, well, she you was know? right. Because T did have that presence. Yeah. And I'm not a brindle person. Everybody yeah. knows I'm yeah. not a brindle person. Funny thing, that lady goes, oh, um, uh, what colour do you call her? I said, we like to call her shit brindle. Yeah, that's, right. that's exactly right, Luke, and that's what I call them. Yeah. You know, if somebody said to me, what about tea? And I'd say, yeah, shit brindle. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd say, yeah, brindle. Just say no. But she is a shit brindle compared to an yeah. exotic one, yeah. compared to a dilute, compared yeah. to a blue brindle. So it's basically, she's shit, she brindle, shit brindle, brindle and I'm scared shitless of her. And, well, you couldn't, she was right. and you couldn't say anything nicer about her. Right? Right. Yeah. Now, well, whoever it was, yeah. she was spot on. Yeah. And I've never been a brindle. That was Sheila McDonald. Oh, was it? Yeah, 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 well, yeah. You'd expect brilliance from her, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. You'd expect it. Absolutely. You know, successful hound person to the nth degree. Yeah. Seen them all, seen all the greats. Yeah. Done it all. You would expect yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But I've never been a brindle person. Everybody knows it. Yeah. I'm not. It's not my favourite colour. I find problems in brindles, in shit brindles. Yeah. Um, that consistently mm-hmm. is there in the breed when I judge them. Yep. Not in tea. Yeah. I think she was exceptional. Um. You know, she was one out of the box. Yeah. But normally in shit brindles, I find they have 
thick flues. Oh, right. They don't have a lot of chiselling. Yeah. They have furry faces. I mean, they wouldn't now in the way yeah, the presentation is, yeah. but they are. Yeah, yeah, but they traditionally, have furry faces. yeah. They tend to have a rounder, softer wow, eye. They right. don't have that piercing gaze. They don't have a, an almond-shaped eye, bearing in mind that everybody says almond and it really should be triangular. Yeah, absolutely. But the brindles tend to have a forward look. Right. They tend to have more stop. Yep. Um, and their coats, not in your case, of course, these days, yeah. but their coats are wrong. Wow. The texture in brindles yeah, yeah, is basically yeah. wrong. It's springy and it's tends to be crimpy. Not that there's a problem. I yeah. mean, you can have a curly coat. There's no yeah. problem. Has to for did. Yeah. But it's a crimpy coat. Yeah. Now, you can't tell anymore because everything's so brilliant. Yeah. Presentation's so fabulous. Yeah. The products are so outstanding. Yeah. But if you go through the history of the breed... That's phenomenal. You, and then you look right back at that very first Brindle one um, that they... Um, in England, and they, that's when there was a big riot and they said the, he wasn't pure bred. He'd come from Afghanistan. Oh, because he was Brindle? Yes. Really? They, they rejected him as being oh. he'd come from Afghanistan and they said he probably wasn't pure bred. And there's a lot of stuff that reckons that those, especially the Brindles, were uh, had um, Russian um, of Charkas, the Brindle, Russian working dog, that came from that part of the world that came from the Russian part and they those brindle lines came in from that wow. area and there was a lot that reckoned the brindle colour came in with the Opchakas, with oh. the, the Russian dogs and they were very anti the blues, Yeah, very anti the blues because they reckoned the blues came in and it doesn't make any sense with Saluki and that doesn't make sense because oh, it's yeah. the only colour that's not allowed in a Saluki is a blue. So it doesn't oh. make any sense. So I've even, even recently I've heard like negative, like negative feedback about the blue colour. Mm. Like, I think it's that still always exists now. Negative feedback yeah, about yeah. the blues, and there's people that say they do have specific health problems. Mm-hmm. We never had them in mm. our blues, and they came from Amir Grey Dawn back to Shurkan. Mm. And we um, Paula Laws, you wouldn't know her now. Um, Gurian was a prefix, and she brought in a white bitch from Joan Wanacott in England, and she mated her to Cammy. And we got four blues, two very dark ones, and and Quetzal and Quo, who were powder blues, very patterned. Mm-hmm. And they had this funny gold in them, this khaki gold look, mm. um, and we never had health issues ever. Mm. And I've still got the lines. In fact, the dog I brought in from Canada yeah. goes back to a daughter of Quetzalcoatl, who I'd sent to Canada to Brenda, and then I brought Sebastian back in, and he goes straight back on that blue line. How many that's... years ago? Uh, how many years ago did I bring him in or how many years no, ago? No, does that go back? It goes back, back 30 years to, wow. to what Brenda had from me 30 years ago. So was that a big a big reason you brought this guy in? Yeah, that's the major Yeah, reason. yeah, yeah. Because I was looking for a new stud dog. Yeah. I couldn't find what I wanted. Yeah. And she, I looked at a dog in Russia and he's on um, the internet a lot, whatever his name is, and it was a nice, very nice blue brindle puppy, even though it was a brindle, but it was a blue brindle, so yeah. it was a dilute. And I was mucking around thinking about bringing him and he was lovely. But... To come here from Russia was more tricky. They are coming. Oh, you know, there's tough, a lot of though, Russian dogs Russia. coming. Yeah, yeah. But it was more tricky with a coated breed because he had to spend time uh, in like six, six months, months somewhere yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. to find someone to look after him no, it's too for hard. six months as a puppy yeah. when he would be changing coat and everything. It just got too difficult. Yeah. So I wrote to Brenda because Canada, he could have gone in direct. And Brenda and I have always been in touch. But I wrote to her and said, look, what about I put this dog with you in Canada and you can use him or you can collect from him or whatever right. you want to do because yep. he'll fit Good idea. type-wise. Yeah. He'll be like very eagle. He'll be lovely for you and then he can come on to Australia. And while we were in the middle of doing that, we both got cold feet because I'd ask the guy repeatedly for – he always had his tail down – and I'd ask him repeatedly for some video of him happy, relaxed, out on the road with his tail up and he kept – saying, oh, I can't do it, it's raining, and I know that. I mean, somebody can ask me now for a whippet baby and I'll say, I can't do it. You know, I'm busy. Um, but we just thought there was a temperament problem there. He finished up going to Belgium, actually, to a friend of Audrey's, mm-hmm. Audrey um, Benoit, my mate, um, and he's with her and he looks a lovely, lovely dog. Mm. But I've never seen a photo of him standing free with his tail up. Like we, had that, we had that not long ago where I he, fell in love I, with What this. did I do with the love Did I put it back? I put it in the fridge. Oh, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dear. Mm. Well, it's the Spanish carver. It's just bubbles. 
I love it. Yeah. Nice Let me pour. And as I said, I think I'm probably a gypsy at heart and anything Spanish. Calahor is Spanish. Right. That's oh, well, let's ask that in a second. Because <laughs> I just wanted to say, like, we were looking at – I fell in love with this dog, right, overseas. And um, I did everything I could to, to, um, to get him and bring him in. And then there was just a temperament thing that was raised with him. And I was like, no. my heart was broken. I'm like, you, yeah. you just you can't, can't risk can't. it. Yeah. Because you, even though we're down to 10 days, and like I said with Eagle, I've put dogs through nine months. It's still Even expensive. So we're down to 10 days. Uh, we can't hear you. Can't <laughs> <laughs> Do it over here. You can still pop it on. Up, even you know, yeah, I'll open it. You, you talk. Know, you can't, even though we're down to 10 days yes. quarantine, and I put this dog through over 12 months, um, you can't bring in a dog with poor temperament. No. I mean, it doesn't matter how far we've come in the breed with quality and style and class, and there's still basically got to be able to go into a family and be a pet Correct. dog. Correct. Yes. They just have to. It doesn't matter what breed. Any breed. I think yes. we always need to remember that, Any right? Yeah. Any breed. Yeah. 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 So if you're going to import a dog for any yep. qualities that he has, temperament and health have to be right up the top, no yep. matter how good totally he is. Totally agree, yeah. Yep. You just can't risk it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that's one good thing. I don't, I don't mean to refer to tea all the time, but um, one great thing about tea, is, and it's a, it's a, it is um, – Really good about how she was reared and bred. Oh. I never had to. I never had to touch her tail. Never, no. ever. No, that it was, was cranked. Proper carriage, yeah. Proper Afghan. Yeah. You know, raised in action. Sure, they can let it drop when they're stacked, and a lot do. And the English, of course, make them drop. They, them yeah, they then. prefer. They won't let them stand with an erect. But I couldn't get T to drop. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm doomed. I'm doomed under the English. No, well, basically, I mean, you know, the king of dogs. It owns the ground it treads on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And its natural instinct is to have its tail in the air. Because yep. that's part of its whole carriage. It has to be. And yep. you can worry and you can fiddle and you can hope and you can pray, but basically it's that standing and owning the ground they tread on and they don't own the ground they tread on if their tail's down. No. Yep. You can learn to accept it. You can learn to live with it. You can yep. learn to say tail raised in action. And it is only meant to be raised in action. But, um, you know, if you're going to import a dog, the temperament has to be outstanding. Yes. Put in the fridge or? Well, I think I better put another one. Or won't you be able to drive? I'll drive when it's a Boston podcast. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Oh, this is so good, Wendy. I'm like a pig in shit. It's funny. Do you know Steve Farnham with the Lars's? Um. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. the the bald guy, yes. super care. Yes. He's the one that came up to me in Wollongong on the weekend, right? So when we um when we started this, we drew up a, a potential guest list, right, of which you were on, and then we had Tracy the weekend before yeah, yeah. goes, you need to get Wendy on, and then this guy came running over to me. You know your podcast, you have to get Wendy on. Really? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, Steve's an absolute darling. Yeah. Yeah. He's been around forever. Been associated again with fabulous Lars's yep. forever. Yeah, he's got a cute it? puppy at the oh, moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he um, he's taken on being the official carer for Peter Wobby, right. who I mentioned brought Cammy out oh, on the boat. Right. Now, Peter's been our mate forever. And again, it's another story if we want to go there. Yeah. Um, and P- and um, he's now his official carer because Peter's very frail. Yeah. And Stephen um, is wonderful. And we've got back to coming here once a month. We have a lunch. Yep. Brings Pete and we have lunch and we do what we're doing. Yeah. Right? And exactly the same. Steve just sits here like – and he yeah. said, I'm saying, oh, I'm sorry. What Don't, he said. Keep going. Just yeah. keep going. It's a proper and history like lesson. Sponge. I love and it. And that's what he said. He wants yeah. to listen to people yeah. like myself and Nan Carter comes and Judy yeah. Collins comes because we all have been there forever. Yeah. And um and he just loved it. Yeah. Exactly that. I yeah. didn't know he'd said that. <laughs> That's who yeah, he, and he came running over to me. Yeah. And he just goes, You have to get Wendy on. And then he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That'd be him. That'd be Steve. Yeah. It was yeah. hilarious. But because yeah. like, even Kylie and I were saying, I think the importance of these discussions and being able to record them is that we go to the shows and we see you, we know you've been around for a sure. long time and you've got experience and this yeah. sort of stuff. But but you don't really no, know no. until you talk to somebody and, and hear about 
what you've been saying. Yeah, like, well, I said I'm dreadful because I can't stay on the subject. Yeah, but we everything, like that. that. Everything sends me off on another yeah. story yeah. in yeah. somewhere, some but, direction. Well, something I really want to touch on. I really want to come back to how you come up with the colour horror name. However, one thing that for me it's always a super interesting topic is um, type, soundness, and combining the two, right? And you've – which has surprised me, to be honest with you. You've spoken so much about detail of the breed, right, which, like, I love. Like, but I, want, I really want to know when it comes to it what you prioritise when it comes time to choosing dogs and bitches to breed with and things like that. Type. Always. Type always. Yep. Yeah. You can breed soundness in. Yep. You can't put type in if it isn't there. Yep. So the first thing, type must, for me. Yep. And then it's, it's the speci- maximum Specific degree. to Afghans too yeah. though, right? I know like, everything. Yeah. Judge your Staffords, yep. everything, same yep. thing. Type. I've got to have type. Yep. It's got to come into the ring and I've got to think, oh, aren't you beautiful? Yeah. Yep. And then I will analyse and then if there is a serious deviation in soundness, yep. I have to rationalise. Yep. Now when I'm saying a serious mm. deviation in soundness, it's soundness for the breed type. Yes. And so if the type isn't there, it can be as sound as can be, mm-hmm. But it doesn't grab me. It isn't a Stafford. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't put up an unsound dog. I don't think I've ever put up a, a seriously unsound dog. Yep. I mean, I won't put up cow hawks and I won't put up bow hawks and I won't yep. put up out in elbow. And yep. I, 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 no yep. matter how good the type is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't that's make that. Good to that hear. Yeah. Jump. So there's unforgivables as far yes. as soundness yes. is concerned, and that yes. I think that's the important um, clarification. Yes. Because so many people say, "Oh, it's got to be typey." But then you see this cripple walking around right, and you think you it's can't. no good. No, it's, it's I not, agree. That's it's not that, a healthy dog. That's to, exactly. Again, that's, coming back to this thing, you've got to put these dogs yeah. into pet homes, right? Yes. Ultimately. Yes. So it's a re- I think that's an important distinction. Oh, yeah. tremendously yeah. important. So once you've got that foundation as soundness is concerned as far as it's not a cripple. That's right. It's then, not a cripple or it's not going to, one assumes, become a cripple yes. with arthritis yes. and stuff yeah. in a, and later age. Yep. And I, I have to be very careful because... I'm very um, aligned to our chiropractor mm-hmm. right, people. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, mm. they're, the dog's an athlete. Mm. Yes, and so I know who you go, I know who you go to down at Brinjelli. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, and before that, there was a. One I heard you just go there to perv on him. <laughs> Isn't Have you seen his father? Well, that's who I used to go to. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I'm not there to put they, they bought they, they bought a whippet um, bought, bought a whippet from him many years ago. And Beverly's just gorgeous, of course. And when she came, I thought, oh my God, you married to that man and you produced that one. <laughs> just, oh my goodness. <laughs> but no, uh, before that, there was a guy called Max Lott, and he was an Irish setter guy. And he was uh, the old-fashioned bone cracker type that people run a mile from now. Yep. Yep. Um, and he was great. And we used to live at West Pennant Hills and, and Max used to come, you know, every four weeks, six weeks, whatever. If he was somewhere around, he'd say, I'll be in your area. And he would just go through the entire kennel. And it was interesting, some of the ones never needed anything. Mm-hmm. And he used to love that. Right. Oh, he'd say, oh, this is this. Oh, I love wow. her. Mm. And he used to love it if they never needed anything. Yeah. And did you ever see a pattern with, were they the no, soundest you, dogs you, or no, no? No, no, there wasn't a pattern. Just some individuals just, just never hurt. Yeah. Never, it's not even hurt, never did something yeah. out of alignment yeah. that had a flow-on effect. Yep. Yeah. You did this, so you're going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, there was no pattern, there yeah. was no bloodline, there was nothing. Just some dogs pleased him. I used to love to see them. Other dogs, yeah, put the neck back, you know, put the sacroiliac back, yeah. put the toe back. There'd be maintenance. Yeah. And we used to just have a mattress, put down a mattress at West Pennant Hills in the big concrete yard and literally, you know, he and I'd sit on the ground and he'd do the dogs and I'd sit on the head if I had to or yeah. hold yeah. their leg or whatever. Wow. And he was terrific. So you've been using an animal chiropractor for how long? 30 years. Yeah. What in- initially made you think about using one? The athlete thing. Why does what appears to be mm. a well-constructed, non-exaggerated, mm. normal animal develop a difference in gait? Mm. Or the first one, and I missed it with her, and I always forget it. We had we're a beautiful Dutchy daughter called uh, Santa Maria, and she was a black and tan, really highly marked, big winged eyebrows. Oh, and, beautiful! Oh, she was fabulous, yeah, yeah. and she won, and she won. And then all of a sudden, 
she'd started, she'd go out and start a triangle and then she'd just stop. And I used to think it was mental. Yeah. I used to think, oh, you rotten thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you cow. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> You're horrible thing. You pretty Come little on. thing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's funny because Audrey wanted her, Audrey was living with us at the time yeah. and she wanted to take her back to Europe but, of course, I wouldn't let her go. And um, I could always think, you rotten beast, you know, you uncooperative, horrible thing. I realised now, very much so, but shortly after we retired her, that she was actually sore. Wow. And she would do X, Y, Z and then something would hurt and yeah. because she was a softie, the others would... Of course, yeah, through. yeah. She'd say, I'm uncomfortable. So I'm she'd just sport. say, I'm not doing it. I won't come back on just the Just like train. humans, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel dreadful because I didn't know enough about it then. Wow. And then found Max because he was an Irish setter guy. I have no idea how it happened. Yeah. But somehow I was aware there was this Irish setter guy that... As I said, it was a bone cracker in the old yeah. terminology. Yeah. And he lived up at um up the back of Castle Ray. Yeah. And we were at West Pennant Hills and he just made that was the circuit. Yeah. You just come. Wow. And I I, I have to be careful because when you're judging you get a lot of dogs you feel are sore. Yeah. Yes. And you have to be careful how you say to them afterwards. I th- really think I don't be offended. It's a gorgeous animal, but it's not really comfortable. I think it's sore. Yeah. Really, always the sacro, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you and you know, I yeah. think you should go to a chiropractor. Yeah. Most people are grateful. But we have that careful. in we have that in Stafford's all the time. Like every and time we're in Stafford's. Yeah. It's, it's like they could just turn funny on floorboards inside, and it'd be done. Yes. You know? yes. It's not. It's not a fault of the dog itself no. or, or anything no. like that, but they just need maintenance. And the yeah. trouble is, especially with your Staffords, they're so pain tolerant. Yes, yeah, that they yeah. compensate absolutely. And when, when, even when, um, if you go to a chiropractor or a muscle man, sometimes they can't find it because the dog's not giving indication. No, no. 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 they're very yeah. stoic. Yeah. Because they're as tough as teak yeah. as they're meant to be. Yeah, and they say, "Oh, that hurt, but I can cope with that. I'll just lean a little bit this way, or I'll move a little further on that foot." Yeah, and I do. Find when I'm judging, I find an awful lot of sore dogs, mm. and I feel sad because yeah. they're lovely or they're not lovely. It doesn't matter; they shouldn't mm. be sore. Yeah. But you've got to be really careful telling that. That's to yeah. The owner. Yeah, this is actually a really good topic. No, yeah, about animal well, chiropractors you know. and things like yeah, that. Maybe we is. should it chat to Neil. Good, you know. Yes, it is a good topic. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. But um, and he'd be great. To, yeah. You know, have a great chat to Neil. I, I'd, yeah. also, I'd be grateful if it, you know if if my dog was sore and a judge sort of said, "Listen, sure, you know, I think your dog's a bit sore." And Kylie, and I fine, think most people I are, would appreciate yeah. that. and especially newcomers, yeah. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. But you do have to be, have careful, to be very careful. Yeah. Um, you know, for a while there, everyone was sort of brave and saying, "I think your dog's got HD." Well, no. You're not a vet, and you never yeah. say you're. No, that's a ridi- vet, that's not. That's no. a ridiculous thing because then that's you're right. you're so having never would say then you're having a crack at the person individually yes. or their breeding. Or the breeding, or, you know, exactly. Yeah. So but you to would say, never say no, to a, a, a no. person in the ring, "I think your dog's H- got yeah. HD," because no. we don't know. No, you can't diagnose. But all you can <laughs> say is, "I think he's a bit sore. sore yeah. He's yeah. not comfortable. Yeah. It's yeah. hurting him." Yep. And so sometimes they probably wouldn't know. They're they're like looking down on the dog. Wouldn't have any idea. No, no, they wouldn't have any idea. And you've asked for an opinion, and I think it's probably it's probably a positive thing to say to somebody yeah. well i find it <laughs> yeah positive. that's if how they take it in the right I, mean, I think people just need to toughen up and, and yes you know. yeah and that's how i judge it gives it a re- it gives you a, it gives them a reason why they may not have placed sure. higher and it worries me if it's a newcomer mm. because they're going to get beaten week after week after week Absolutely. with a nice dog yeah, yeah yeah and then they're going to complain to the breeder yeah and he's going to say but i sold you a quality yeah. puppy that's a really and good so point, it's Wendy. it's yeah. um defeative because we're not good you know what we're like we, I think we see it a fair bit in Stafford's particularly. Dogs are just – some days you'd see in previous weeks they get around and other days you think, that dog's really struggling. And it, I think it would be nice if we had a better um, – Anatomical. Yeah, <laughs> where you could go to somebody yes. uh, and honestly yes. and say, listen, I think your dog might be a bit sore, yeah. without them just go, hey, don't sure. why stab me in the heart? Sure. No, well, I agree with you totally. Yeah. And in your Stafford's especially, it's in the hind quarter. Yeah, always. And you yeah. get these dogs with these really, really – Loosely connected mm. bowhawks, and some days they cope. They cope well. Mm. Some days they're oh, mm. maybe, but they're pretty good. Mm. You judge the same dog another time, and he's got this terribly yep. weak, bowed yep. out hindquarter moving outside his front, and yeah. and I feel sad for the dog because mm. he's obviously mm. uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah, you know he's in pain. It yeah. mightn't be big pain because they're staffords. Yeah, but he is in pain. I, I don't think it's the. It's not the owner's. Fault either. No, it's not. I, I, they I, have no idea. It's generally that um, uh, 
muscle men and chiropractors aren't common enough. Like no. the, I, don't, I don't think we have the discussion enough to no, think. No, not. You know, we talk See, about. See, I've got an Afghan puppy bitch in Hawaii that I'm just devastated because they can't stop her pacing. Really? They cannot stop her pacing. She didn't leave me as a baby. Pa- one by um, Phyllis's boy from um, Craig's girl, one yeah. of that litter. Yeah. They cannot stop her pacing. And I've had them send me videos and I've had them do this and I've had them do that. And they, they say every now and then she'll go across the backyard and she'll move normally and beautifully. But most of the time she paces. And I'm desperate. I'm saying we've got to find a muscle man. Mm. There, we've had a check for HD. I've never bred one, but it's always yeah. possible. Yeah. So I had them have her check her. Yeah. And, um, you know, you don't know and it yeah. could be goodness knows, but it wasn't. She's clear. Her hips are perfect. She's a little bit too short. She's a little bit too square. But it still should not be necessary yeah. that she's pacing. She yeah. should be able to be broken out of the pace, you know, start to pace, stop her, start her again, yeah. break her out of it. But they cannot. And I'm desperate. And they cannot find anyone in Hawaii in a muscle man wow. to do her. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, there's some beautiful, fabulous dogs in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. There are some racing greyhounds in Hawaii. So why on earth can't we find yeah. a muscle man? There's yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not but enough we, around. We, no, like we can't find a muscle man. Yeah. And I'm sure that's what it is. I'm yeah. sure she needs laser treatment, you know, Neil's Zotter thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, she needs that. And I'm sure there's soreness there. Yeah. But she's had it for so long. She knows exactly how to move so it doesn't hurt. Yeah, wow. And we can't figure it. I hate it. I hate mm. it being there. You know how much it costs them to take. I mean, yeah. Yeah. two or three thousand dollars in freight. Yes. Never mind buy dogs. Yes. So anything that's exported to somewhere like that that costs so much in freight to, to send it, yeah. I'm desperate to find why is it doing it. Yeah. But I think mean, you know it, it starts off as hurting and and then they find they a way to move. Yes. Exactly right, Kylie. Right. Exactly. And right. then it becomes a habit, and that's exactly. the way they move. Exactly yeah. right. They and all find of a sudden, how you, to compensate yeah. so there's no yeah. discomfort, yeah. and then you cannot break that pattern. Mm. Um, going back to the type, right? I really want to get into this. Yes. <laughs> so we've identified type versus soundness, yes. but unforgivables in soundness. And for me, that's a really good explanation that I've never heard before, right? That Because no one wants an unsound dog. No. But um, for those that um, p- potentially favour fronts or soundness mm. and things like that, mm. say, um, you know, you need, to, you need a sound dog. And for you, a healthy life, correct. You need a yeah, sound. so I really like that um, that that you've you've, you've sectioned that part and you've yes. you've covered that off and said, listen, you'd still need a sound dog, yes. right? But we need to prioritize. You, you need a sound dog as far as I don't want it unhealthy, I don't want it sore, and it needs to function. Yes, but we need to be taught. We need to be focusing on type, and we need to be focusing on breed detail that identifies the breed. Hundred percent. And when it comes, when it comes, you know, Staffords as well, but with Afghans, there's so much detail, mm. you know, and and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think it's unfair for an Afghan to compete against other breeds, sure, because there's so much detail sure. to make a good one, sure. And I feel that when you do get the detail and you get binned for some, uh, maybe a construction issue, mm. but you think, have a look at the detail that's gone into exactly. the head alone, mm. exactly, and how hard that is for yes. the breeder over generations. Sure. To, which, to produce and, a head like that, you know, and 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 props to Helen. When when you said about the brindles, about what normally yeah. comes with them, yeah. and then you look at a tea, yeah. with has such a, her head is so stunning. Yes, you know it has all that detail, yeah. has those triangle Glorious eyes, head. that expression, yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's gone against Glorious everything head. that that colour is trying to absolutely. to get, and absolutely. then you, and I mean that's why. And people used to say to me, but you don't like. Shit brindles. Yeah. Um, but that's why I admired tea so much and what was achieved in producing tea. Yes. Because she doesn't have any of the shit brindle, mm. normal, <sighs> failure to impress me features that yep. goes with that colour. Yeah. And she doesn't have any of yes. them. Yes. And I respect that enormously. Yeah. Yeah. Enormously. Yeah. Because I, for generations of looking at other people's brindles, and not ever – I've had a couple, mm-hmm. I've bred a few, mm-hmm. but not wanting that colour, that type problem mm. in my lines mm. that would come if I got deeply involved in those brindles. Mm. The do- dilute brindles are fine. I don't have any problem. They mm. fit in. But I've had – I used Tiger, the famous Chantara Tata Sarakesh, mm-hmm. who was the first um, brindle of his type and his kind yep. to come into Australia. Yeah. And I, there were things I didn't like, and those were some of them. Yeah. Um, 
And we beat him now and then with various things. Moss beat him and Inca beat him and Wally beat him years back. But um, I've still respected the dog because he had the presence. Yeah. He had this huge feat. Yeah. He had the incredible attitude. He had yeah. a wonderful top line and tail and group and... Just um, on the top lines, though, for now, like, do you think there's enough focus on that? No, at the moment, like, no, there's when, not. when I see a hard top line, there's prominent hip bones and yeah. that steep croup. Yeah. Like, that for me, is, that makes my heart skip it. a beat. You Absolutely. know, absolutely. And of course, I can't stand the sloping top lines. Mm. I cannot stand straight shoulders, no. sloping top lines, and over untypical rears. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're untypical, but they're totally unfunctional. Yes, you know that shape can't go up the side That's of a mountain in Afghanistan sense. chasing a, a a chamois deer. Yeah. Because the balance is all wrong, the yeah. centre of gravity is all wrong, the distribution on the weight is all wrong. Yeah. So I cannot stand sloping top lines. Yeah, now, yeah. Some beautiful dogs are set up with sloping top lines because it's what they think they should look like these days. But it's always a problem for yeah. me. If they're capable of a sloping top line, it's a problem for me. It right. means something's wrong somewhere or they yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah. But you couldn't slope Sebastian. Right. There's no way. Right. Even if you over tried to overstack, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Like a, yep. the no overstacking how you of a dog, it, right? Overstacked it, taught it to stand ah, on its toes at the front, right. taught it to reach too far behind and stand on its toes yeah. behind. Center of gravity is all wrong. Yeah. Balance is wrong. Weight is wrong. You could not stack that dog with a sloping top line. Interesting. And yes, we're going way back. That's one of the reasons I got him because I was looking at this Russian dog. Brenda and I decided no. And I just said to Renda, well, of course, what have you got for me? She offered me a dog that didn't suit me and I was a bit surprised that she actually was very keen on him. Mm. But I already had his blood anyway, so he didn't suit. And I said, no, 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 because... And she said, well, there's always Sebastian. And I said, well, who's Sebastian? So she sent me this photo of Sebastian as a young dog looking so like Quetzal that I just nearly was sick. Right. And I just wrote back and said, yep, who is he? So she told me who he was. He's a father-daughter mating um, on old, old Acaba lines, not ones that I have, but his bitch line is entirely mine and a Quetzal wow. granddaughter and Amy great-granddaughter. Which she didn't stuff. know like when she said Sebastian. I, well, she didn't. She just, there's always Sebastian. I mean, she yeah. knew he was all my life. Right, okay. But yeah. she had no idea. Now, I mean, he was a six-year-old dog, mm. got his title, been retired, never done anything, had his mother, had his sisters, whatever, didn't need him, yep. sitting in the backyard, yep. in coat. Um, and, you know, and I saw one photo. It was one photo and he's looking over his shoulder and I thought, oh, my goodness me, Quetzal. And I said, yeah, that's it. So he came. Yep. Um, but I wasn't re- – I didn't find him through looking for him. I found him just as a throwaway line. Yeah. She and I laugh. We often say, well, of course, there's always Sebastian. Yeah. And he came here nearly seven years old, always to be clipped off. I wanted her to clip him before she sent him. Yep. Because he was only going to be a stud dog. I don't need a, an Afghan male in coat. I can't, yeah. you know, no way. Yeah. Um, but she sent him out in such beautiful condition because yeah. she did a frantic rush to try and put his American title on his Canadian title be- and his UKC title before he came out here. And she sent him, we missed out by two points. Right. And because um, of the way their system works. Yeah. Um, and he came out here in beautiful coat. And I couldn't turn around and say, oh, well, thanks very yep. much, Brenda, I'll clip him off. Yep. So we showed him. He did yep. extremely well. Yep. got the breed of the royal. I know. You can't yeah. do Under any more. Under a specialist as Under well. Under a specialist. Yeah. You can't do any more than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. That must have been a nice day, though. Yeah, like. And I wasn't even there. Oh, really? Craig's took him. I wasn't yeah. even there. Yeah. And I got Good a Good moment for him, though, right? Like handling oh, him. And brilliant. Yeah. And I got this message from Mel saying, Sebastian just won the breed. And I wrote back and said, oh, yeah, you know, ha, ha, who won? She said, I've just told you, Sebastian <laughs> just won the bread. And, I mean, he's a wonderful dog and I, I absolutely adore him. But there's no way you could set that dog up with a sloping top line. Right. It is anatomically impossible really because of the way he's built. Yeah. He couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, he's clipped off and these things happen. Yeah. But as I said, he's seven years old, he's retired, he's living in dirt because that's all I've got here at the moment. I yeah. don't have much concrete. Yeah. And he's as happy as can be and yeah. he's divine and I love him. Yeah. Him. Awesome. But it was just a throwaway line. So yeah, often yeah. Brenda and I do this thing and we say, well, of course, there's always Sebastian. Yeah. Because she couldn't believe I said, please, please put him on a plane as quick as we really? can get him on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so she's so proud too that you've got oh, him here. She's and, over yeah. the moon. And you've got some nice pups by him too, brilliant, right? Yeah. Brilliant puppies. Yeah. yeah. Really Those young ones fabulous, are nice. Beautiful puppies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fabulous. And it just gelled. That went with that. That came yeah. out and that produced, you know, as it was supposed to. Yeah. 
And that's what I say in those days we had to buy on pedigrees. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't buy on it. And anything. you trusted the pedigree, you right? You had to and trust yeah. the pedigree and yeah. you had to buy on it. Yeah. And as I said, Lynette went one way, Helen went one way, Barbara went one way, I went another way. Yeah. There were various other people, butte people around that bred good dogs that yeah. went with different bloodlines. But because of the geographical isolation of Australia, the cost of bringing dogs into Australia, yeah. you had to do your work, you had yeah. to do your homework. You couldn't just say, I like that, I'll send them an email and I'll see if they've got a puppy. You just couldn't do that. Yeah. We yeah. didn't have... The facility wasn't there yeah. and the mindset certainly wasn't there. Right. The mindset was yeah, totally yeah, yeah. figure out the pedigree. Yeah. Where's it going to fit when it comes in? Yeah. This well, you have to understand that this was, you know, nearly 60 years ago when you started. Yeah. Oh, it's, absolutely. But we've, obviously, you expect to evolve in that yeah, time. And, yeah. Well, 50 you know, minimum. You, you were pioneering. We were all, 50 minimum years ago, we were all doing it. Yeah. And, and that's when we had these fabulous Afghans and every judge that ever came to Australia said the Australian Afghans were the best in the world. Wow. Uh, and they put them up. Yeah. They gave them royal shows <laughs> yes. and power shows. And, yes. You know, fabulous specialties held yeah. on. A, a couple of the specialties, the entries were so big, it was Ginny Withington and it was... Um, <laughs> above. Anyway, um, we did baby puppies on the Friday nights. Right. That's how big the Yeah, yeah, were. yeah, yeah. Because we got rid, we did the babies on the Friday night, yeah. full late Friday night judging. Yeah. Babies done over the winner only to come back on the Sunday. Sheila Dev awesome. Carlaway is what I'm trying to think of. Sheila and um, Ginny Withington they drew the biggest entries ever. Wow! And they were in the 500, 600. But we wow. had to do babies on the Friday night. We couldn't get through otherwise. Yeah. So Wendy, back to breed detail. Yes. I still want to get a picture from you of what you prioritise in the breed. A very hard. Angular, no softness, no curves, no padding. Primitive animal. Yeah. Um, very arrogant. Yeah. Um, upright head carriage. Yes. Which also goes with straighter shoulders. So yes. there's a fine line between. This was, the an, two. this was something I really wanted to talk to you about <laughs> with shoulders, right? So let's come back to it because <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, you know, we'll I don't want. I still don't. I don't want to. No, wanna, no, you no. Know. <laughs> but it's back. You're really talking Astor and Wallywog. Yeah. Um, and you're talking what Helen and Lynette wanted and what I wanted. Yeah. Um. Hard, angular, athletic, arrogant, primitive, very, um, very defined in its things like its set on and its wither and its top line and its croup and its tail and its natural proper ring tail. Yeah. Um, big feet. Yeah. Um, big heart room. Um, not a body like a Labrador, not that sort of width and breadth. Yeah. Because yeah. they're floating dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, but enough sufficient depth of chest. But not tubular. Oh, never, yeah. never, yeah. no, never tubular. Yeah. Sufficient depth of chest and spring of rib for chest so they can hit the game when they're pulling yeah. it down and they hit it with their shoulder and they're not going to break their shoulder blade because yeah. it's padded and it's for chest. Bit of a dimple, um, definitely a tuck up to the loin, definitely yeah. athletic greyhound racing shape. Yeah. Um, and and as I said, a dog that walks into the ring and Owns it. says, I own it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. Don't yeah. touch it. Yeah. Please don't touch it. Which is an awesome it. sight. Like if you it sit back and look for that, yeah. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, yeah. And I think when that on that point alone, when people are coming in and trying to drive their dog through food, you you, you lose you lose that everything. look. Absolutely, you yeah. lose everything. A, an Afghan hound should never be dependent on its handler. Yeah. It's there to do as you ask it to do so far as it feels like doing it. But it should never be handler dependent. Yeah. Should never need bait. Yeah. Should never need geeing up and scratching on the hip bones and all this, you know, get with it stuff. Yeah. It shouldn't need it. Yeah. It should be a little mentally divorced yes. from the whole thing. Mm. I'm in the show ring and I'm doing it I'm and I'm fabulous. I'm suffering it. But I'm, I'm doing it because <laughs> yeah. you've asked me to. It's yeah. not what I would do if you got up this morning and said, what would you like to do this morning? It yeah. wouldn't enter its head. Yeah. It should have that independence and that arrogance. Um, be prepared to please you, but only just so far. Yes. <laughs> you know, and there yeah. will come yes. – and Quetzal was a cow at it. He would drop his tail. Yeah. He would walk into that ring and you could see the judge say, oh, my goodness, and he made me do everything right yeah. and then take them around one more time and Quetzal would drop his tail. He lost his class at Sydney Royal one year for doing exactly that. Wow. Right on the light, right on the death knock, 
He got beaten by another Kalahora, who was the father of the dog I'd won the intermediate <laughs> dog class with, who I then won the group with. But that's irrelevant. Right. <laughs> I loved Quetzal. I adored Quetzal. That's hilarious. But he would let me down so often mm. with exactly that Afghan thing. Yep. I've done it. Yeah. What do you mean you want me to do it again? Yeah. I might. <laughs> and he's not serious. Yeah. And the third time round, no, I don't want to be here. Oh. Take me out. And he'd drop his tail. No, he wasn't frightened. He wasn't shy. He had no reason. Not enough. But he was so arrogant yeah. that it was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Three times, no. So you've mentioned primitive a few times, right? Now, prim- I really want to understand what you mean. Like, what what yes. stands out for you for, for primitive? Again, the arrogance, the, the lack of needing a person. Um, but what about the detail of, like, the, the actual detail of, of the, the dog? Of the standard. Of the dog itself. Well, see, for me... Lars is a primitive. Right. Shih Tzu is a primitive. Um, so, like, when I'm describing... Pharaoh's a primitive. If I'm describing, like, an Afghan that's that I describe as primitive, because for me, I'm the same, right? Like, I want... I like an extreme, a, a, a extremely primitive Afghan yes. because, it, uh, for me, it highlights their detail. Yes. And for me, it's... it's You've got to have that, that veining, that chiseled, yes. that chiseled head... You've got to have those eyes that just look straight yes. through you, yes. um, and you need to have that hard top line yes. with those that prominent those prominent hip bones, yes. which we just don't see, into that solid steep yep. croup with Absolutely. that crank tail. Yep. You know, um, and 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 the feet and the big feet. Never forget the feet. You know, and obviously it comes back to the carriage and things like that. But for me, those are the things that create that primitive look that really attracts yes. me to the breed. Oh, I totally agree with you. I don't find Salukis primitive at all. Mm-hmm. I love them and I bred them and had some of the best bloodlines in the world. They're not primitive. Mm. They're Arab, mm. they're desert, mm. they're ancient, but they're not primitive. Mm. And an Afghan is primitive. Mm. But a Lars is primitive. Um, and a Pharaoh is primitive. And obviously the Azawaks are primitive. Yep. They're, they're basically misfits in what... Is accepted. Yeah. What is a show dog? Um, they're misfits. Yeah. And I love the primitive breeds mm. and I love all the Tibetan breeds. I mean, I love every yeah, Tibetan right. or China as yeah. in Tibet, where's the border, Who? Yeah. which side did they live on? I love Pekingese. I love Shih Tzu's. Um, they're primitive breeds for me yeah. and obviously Tibetan Mastiffs, Tibetan Spaniels to a great mm. extent, but and Tibetan Terriers less so. But... They've been there mm. and they've been in a part of the world that wasn't westernised and the westerners found them and brought them out mm-hmm. and promoted them and they're, they're there. Mm. But for me, a bourgeois isn't primitive. Mm. The same people. They took them back to, to mm. England. They took them to Queen Alexandra and stuff. But they weren't primitive. Mm. They're ancient breeds. They're yeah. wonderful breeds. They're breeds I love and respect and I get goosebumps. But yeah. they're not primitive. It's a nice distinction. But for some reason, yeah. Afghans are primitive. Mm. Absolutely. And Lars are primitive. Mm. And the odd, weird sight hounds that don't fit anywhere yeah. else in any yeah. other category, they're primitive. But you also don't get that same primitive feeling from all Afghans. Oh, no. It's terribly lacking. Yeah. Terribly lacking. I think that it's the uh, the arrogance in in them that... Yeah, it's, you it's, feel inferior. Yeah. That, you know that when you get that they first moment? They don't need people. You know? That's yeah. it. That yeah. dog doesn't need people. No. It yeah. respects them yeah. and it will try to please them, but it doesn't need them. Yeah. They're not, to me, a needy breed. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I have, <laughs> I have problems. You need to beg. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have problems with gun dogs, and I'm sorry, gun dog people, but you all know it anyway, because they need people. Yeah. Mm. And I can't make that jump to a dog mm. that needs me. Because you've spent so long with Afghans right. that just don't. Yeah, and I love them and I respect them. Yeah. I think they're fabulous and I love to see them working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The photos of gun dogs in the field. Absolutely. The, uh, beautiful. Paintings yeah. of gun dogs. They're yeah. mind-boggling. Yeah. But they need people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want a breed that needs me. Yeah. The whippets, to a certain extent, are much less primitive. Mm. Um, and they're old, but they're not... They still enjoy their own space, though, right? Yes, yeah. they, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. right. They enjoy their own space, but yeah. they're not needy. Yeah. Mm. And that's yeah. why I get on so well with yeah. the whippets. Yeah. Exactly right. They're not needy. No. But the, and, and Lazars and Shih Tzus and that. Pekingese, they're not yeah. needy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been there forever. Yeah. And they're all of a type and they've come from somewhere yeah. similar. Yeah. But they, they, and they're great and they're very human oriented and they're very responsive and they're everything, but they still are primitive. Yeah. In their, they could survive. Yeah. I always said with Dutchie when he came out here because he was an amazing dog, and I always said with Dutchie the distinction, particularly with him, which was the 
Dutch blood, the video in blood. If he accidentally escaped, he would survive. He'd go into the bush, he would hunt, mm. and he would survive. Yep. When I turned up to say, my God, where have you been for two years? Mm. He would have said, oh, gee, you've taken a long time to get here. How nice mm. to see you. But he would be alive. But you, Absolutely. Don't, you don't think he would have thought he was too arrogant to think he needed food? <laughs> no, 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 he was a hunter. Right. He would have hunted. Yeah. He would have never gone hungry. Yeah. Some of mine might have, yeah. but he would have never gone hungry. We have a joke at home that like, every time um, T licks our daughter Chelsea, she like runs in <laughs> yes. and says, she's just licked me. She's just, yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, sure. You know? Oh, my God, this arrogant creature <laughs> that doesn't care about yeah. anyone yeah. in the whole world and just like, licked me. And no, like, I haven't that seen that it. slight little tail <laughs> wag. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just a and, little and little T one. says, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen. I don't know if I still believe it, but <laughs> that, that's just. No, a, I would totally believe that's that. That's a joke. I yeah. would totally believe that. Yeah. Because they're so clever. Yeah. They're so smart. Yeah. And people say, "Oh, you know, why are you breeding the dumbest dog in the world?" No, they're and you not. Think, they're not. I can't even try to answer that. No, they're just I on can't a. Can't even tell you. They're on a different the level. The dog is so far ahead of the human yeah. that it they're doesn't happen. Absolutely on a different level. Yep. Now you mentioned something about um, coat. I'd like to go into that. And obviously. There came a point where you guys started growing coat or there was a drive to have more coat. Um, I'd really like to sort of understand that more. Like, Yeah, it's what, a fine what? line. Um, I think we just lucked out. Yep. We came into the breed at a stage where for some reason coat was beginning to happen. Yep. Now, in our early days, <laughs> it's hysterical, we had a little tiny house at West Pennant Hills on our five acres and we had a little 6.9 little pagoda thing that we lived in. And we had a door went underneath. Now I used to bath the Afghans in sunlight soap, walk them dry, and then to keep them clean overnight, put them under the house, which of course was a dirt floor. And then we took them to a dog show and we maybe brushed them out and we maybe didn't. And they won like crazy, because that's how the world was. Yeah. Yeah. Graham Pelkin with um, Tiger, Chandharatana Sarakesh, was one of the very first to start beautiful, beautiful right. presentation. And what year was this roughly? Ah, 66. Oh, shit, that's early. And he was yeah. way ahead. Right. And he presented Tiger beautifully. So in Sydney we all started to think, oh, my goodness, we better But did, did judges accept it or did they go, oh, this is too foreign for us? No, too no, 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 they totally or... accepted wow. that this was the, the way forward. All right. David, of course, was brilliant. He'd yep. had all these coated animals all his life yep. and his presentation and he was mind-boggling. Yeah. And so he brought these English champions in and they were always presented clean and tidy yep. in England, like we were presenting yep. with the sunlight soap. But David, of course, was the first. To <laughs> <laughs> we truly did. That was that was a bath. Um, David, of course, presented them beautifully, blow and dry. And what and all year was this with um, David? But that we were bathing in sunlight soap. No, that soap. David came, they brought these dogs in. Oh, probably 68, I'd right. have to check. And how like how much do you think he advanced the breed, like when he, oh, when he came into beyond it? Beyond belief. Yeah. Absolutely beyond belief because... His presentation was fabulous. Yep. He used dog dryers, hair dryers and mm. stuff. He himself was a magnificent handler. Yep. He had a huge profile. So the overseas judges, because yeah. we mostly used the English judges in those yeah. days, yeah. and, you know, he had his cockers and he had his kerries and he had yeah. the Afghans, had, went to England, bought two of the most famous English champion Afghan hounds who've ever been whelped yep. and brought subsequently yeah. many, many fabulous ones from there. Yeah. Then he brought... Um, um, holy man in, yeah. who was like, oh, my goodness, this is a different breed. Yes. And then he brought in the Crown Crest bitches, Capriole and Carousel. Then he brought in Maya from Mexico. I mean, he just stayed ahead of the game. Yeah. He was always ahead of yeah. the game. So he was using stand dries? What, yes. in the late 60s? Yes, yes, wow. David was using. So we, we yeah. chatted to Wayne and Arnold like the, the other week and he was saying, like, I think it was in the 80s or 90s he was using stand dries. Like 80s it would have been. 80s, yeah. Yes. And I'm like, are you serious? Yes. You're using stand dries in 80s? Oh, yes. But like, you know. And you know, in those days, we nearly always had to bring them direct from England. We brought right. in we brought in Olympias from England. Right. They, nobody stocked them here because there was no market. Yeah. That's phenomenal. So nobody had them on there. So like we only had one or two supply places in the whole of Australia. Yeah. And... So they didn't carry stock because nobody was using them, so they couldn't be guaranteed we would buy them. Yeah. So we mostly brought our own dryers in in those days. Wow. Olympias and um, the other English one. And then people like the old show equipment long before Don, yeah. the Youngs, yeah. who are Dalmatian people and who are still there, 
third generation, they sold show equipment eventually to Don and they started bringing in English standing dryers wow. and we all started to support them because it was a heck of a lot cheaper than bringing them in direct. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So did David pretty much start the trend for yes. stand dryers? Yeah, I mean, look, honestly, Graham and Lyle um, with Tiger, they may have been using a right. standing dryer yep. that long ago. They yep. may well have. I, I, they really yeah. probably were. I yeah. don't remember it. Do you remember the first time you ever used one? Not specifically. But surely you would have just gone, oh, my God, like the difference. We probably did, but it, you didn't think about it. Like right. it was the next thing you do. Yep. You know, yep. Now we don't use sunlight soap. Yeah. Now we shampoo. Now we condition. Yeah. Now we don't walk them dry down the road and yeah. put them under the house in the morning. And hope, they're, <laughs> hope they're still clean. Yeah. You know, we put them in a concrete pen now. Yeah. So um, I've no idea when I first used Yeah. Blower dryers, but we've used millions over the many of years, course. and we've tried. We take it for granted sorts, now, right? And we've tried all sorts of different ones. You know, we bought in ones from America, and yeah. and we were the first people using Liberties here, made yep. in Australia. All that stuff, whatever happened, and we were the first people probably to use an aqua tank because they came to us at West Pennant Hills. Wow. Greyhound people had invented the aqua tank, yeah. and it was invented. This for, is a hydro bath, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, it was invented for Greyhound people to yeah. put a bucket of water in. Um, and bath their, their greyhounds yeah. to go to the racetrack yeah. without a flea. And they came to us at West Pennant Hills, you know, what do you think of this? And I said, oh, I can see great potential for this thing. <laughs> and we bought one of the first ones, probably wow. the first, and actually had it plumbed in. So we had hot water and cold water to bath in, whereas all they were doing for the greyhound people was throwing cold. a bucket of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was and then the very, very from first the hose or something. one. And we yeah. still call them aqua tanks because wow. they were. And what uh, year was this? Mm, heaven. I'm trying to think of when I first... Was this before it. or after the, the, the dryers, the stand dryers? Probably about the same time. Same time. Wow. Pretty well much the same time. And in those days we used to buy um, shower bathy things, human shower bathy things, and build them up on a brick plinth. Yep. So we had a bath at our height, so we weren't leaning yeah. over, yep. and we had a nozzle and stuff. And then that was about that time that we discovered that the aqua tank would be a better alternative. So we had these baths about this size, you know, big shower baths, human ones. But we had to lift the dogs, of course, mm -hmm. or treat them to, to teach them to jump on the grooming table and then put them in the bath. And they were great, but they were a nightmare. Mm. Trying to rinse them properly and everything was just terrible. Mm. And the aqua tank, I still call them aqua tank, came in about that time. Mm. And there was a place at um, Pen, at um, not Penrith. No, nearer to us than that. Somewhere there on Pennant Hills. And they were greyhound people and they set up a super supply place like we're all used to now. Mm. And they started selling the Aquatex and, and all the show people started buying them. Once we figured out how to plumb them directly yeah. in the hot water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were, you know, nobody's ever looked back since. But it's probably a, within the same year as the dryers. We suddenly all became conscious yeah. of we must present our dogs. Brilliantly. Wow. But Tiger was always better presented than, than Mosk and Turquoise and, and Wally, who all mm. beats him, but he was always better presented. Right. Much better. Yeah. And then there was David and then it was like the whole game had to be really yeah. uplifted. Yeah. 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 But, you know, we used to travel in those days with four or five Afghans, clean. Um, in and we, so. we would drive to Brisbane or Adelaide or Melbourne. Um, I had a Volvo panel van in those days, which don't exist anymore. And we just push. We had a big cage, and we just all the dogs went into the same cage. Yeah. And we drove, and wherever yeah. we got there, and we sprayed them with water, and we brushed them out, and we showed them. We never rebathed. Yeah. No such thing because nobody had any facilities. No. You never yeah. rebathed anything. It wasn't an expectation. No, you left Sydney with a spotlessly clean dog without any mats or twizzles or anything. Yeah. And you brushed him out when you got to Adelaide Royal or Melbourne Royal or whatever. Wow. You brushed him out, and you went in the ring with him. Yeah. And yeah. Helen the same, and Lynette the same, and. I bet you the roads weren't as good back then either. Like oh, if you go no. to if you drove to Adelaide from <laughs> one Sydney, one year Wayne Burton and I, one year Wayne Burton and I went to Adelaide Royal in my blue Volvo yeah. just after the floods with the potholes, and we got three flat tyres <gasps> between <gasps> Sydney and Adelaide <sighs> on the way to the Royal. It's like the roads were shocking. Oh my god! And how god. many days did it take? Oh, it took us two days. Yeah, two days. <laughs> You're always allowed yeah. to stop somewhere overnight, <laughs> usually Mildura or somewhere. Sleep somewhere overnight and then get through to Adelaide and then get straight to the show to show. You go yeah. straight to the show yeah. and then you'd go home to whoever you were staying with yeah. and you'd think, oh, good. 
Oh. I can have a dinner and a grog. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. We drove, that's just how you did you know, it. That's how we did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nobody had money and nobody had anything special. And we never had cages or crates or trolleys. No. Or nothing. Just passion. Just absolute and passion. Poke them all in the back of the Volvo and shut the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then dig them out when you got there. Yeah. But they were phenomenal. They, look, they were. I mean, now they're phenomenal. They were normal. Yeah. In fact, they were progressive. Yeah. You know, we yeah. were sort of. Oh, way we are ahead of the game. We've yeah. got a dryer. Yeah, yeah, We've got yeah. A bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Another topic I'd I'd love to hear your opinion on, right? Is um, Afghan spring. It's so unique to the breed. It's a terrible topic to ask me about. I fiercely hate bounce. Yes. And I fiercely hated bounce, and I won't mention yep. where it started, but when it started, and certain bloodlines when it started, and it started getting rewarded, and I absolutely hate it. Yes. I cannot stand an Afghan hound that bounces and does not go forward. Mm. Yes. Um, they're a, a, a high school trained horse for me. Yeah. They're collected, they're on the bit, and they go forward. Yeah. Um, I can't. Just make sure you talk to Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. Um, there is a couple of lines here that bounce, yep. and they have bounced now for probably twenty years, yep. and I detest them. And how how would you define bounce as opposed to spring? Upward rather than movement forward. Yep. So for, for spring, for me, there's forward motion. Yes, always. Always. In bounce, there's a spectacular, yes. impressive it's looking. Up then out. Yes, right. and then you got into this terrible California back kick thing that they got. They oh, where the, years. the rear legs. So more so angulated than the front. Well, they're not even really all that no. angulated, but the balance of the dog, the centre of gravity is all wrong. Yes. And it's all push and kick. Yes. It's not drive. Now, they should come under themselves to drive. Mm-hmm. And the uh, rear pastons, the point of the hock should stand about six inches behind the set on of tail. Yeah. The angulation and the power and the drive are carried under the dog. Yeah. Now, to get that at its best... You're into the VDOMs. Yeah. They are the best at standing with all their weight on their hind quarter ready to go bang. Yeah. And never have to think which leg's going to happen. Yeah. They're there. They're poised. They're ready. They're ready to hunt. Um, bounce has come in with the exaggeration of length of neck. So you're getting into a giraffe. Yeah. Giraffes have straight shoulders. Yeah. Uh, straight shoulders mean that the whole thing changes and the whole centre of gravity goes from where it ought to be to where it becomes. Yep. There's no weight on the hind quarter. But that hind quarter is then exaggerated into much more than six inches behind the set on of the tail to the point of the hawk, repastern. And um, so you don't get drive. You get a fluid Right. Ocean, yeah. German Shepherd. So the dog can extend, but it can't drive. That's right. It doesn't right. drive. Okay. It yep. extends extensively. Yep. Yes. Because it's got this very long, fairly yeah, straight hindquarter, but yeah. a lot of length. Yeah. And it's got long rear pastons instead of tiny little short ones. Yeah. And it stands on its rear toes. It's been trained to stand on its rear toes. So it's got a spectacular, yeah. what they call the California kickback. Right. It's got this spectacular Wide open, open gate. gate. Yeah, yeah. Which we, well, an open you know, gate doesn't yeah. take you up the side of a mountain in Afghanistan to pull down a chamois deer. Right. You don't want an open gate. You yeah. want an athletic, poised, strong, driving, functional. balanced, functional rear to go up the side of a mountain and balance on ledges. You don't want... A lot of kickback because there's nowhere to use your kickback. Have you seen a dog with the kickback and drive? No. Right. I'd have to be honest, no. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Because the whole type of movement's changed so much. Everybody's now saying we don't want California kickback, but they're riddled with it. It's there. Yeah. Uh, and I Wendy, this is an interesting topic. And it's – no, no. I've it's not be that, careful. No, no, no. It's good because – it's not that people are going because a, a super wide gate is impressive no matter what, That's right? right? But it's, um, it's they may not have had the, the the fortune to speak to somebody like yourself to um, clarify the difference. Like even for me, with you just saying then drive versus kickback, it's a different thing. Totally. And I, like now moving forward, I'll be able to look at that differently mm. and then form my opinion based on whether it is actually propelling itself sure. forward sure. using. It's it's redrive yes. functionally yeah. rather than just for show. Yeah. And I, I think that's an important distinction, yeah. and I don't think it's 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 unfair to have a crack at people to say, "Hey, I love that gate," when they're not necessarily educated as, the, oh, as far as the detail. Absolutely, of, 
No, and you know the I mean? modern Afghan hound gait, to me, is mostly wrong. Yeah. I find very few correct yeah. ones. Because we, uh, But you can only judge what's in front of you. So you judge the best dog yeah. overall. Yeah. And the best dogs, very often now, they're long. They're not as square as they should be. Yeah. They've got sloping top lines because that's been bred into them for this very, very yeah. elegated, <laughs> elevated giraffe-type yeah. head. And so that lets the top line slope. That lets you have a big amount of rear, but there's no power because it should be a square dog yes. and the weight should be evenly distributed on all four feet. But it isn't anymore because the centre of gravity's moved. It's no longer where it should be. Right, at the centre of yeah, – that's a yeah, good point, yeah. right? It's moved. Yeah. And it's moved from it's very its close balance. to the wither yeah. to further back to give you a longer top oh. line, to give you more rear. Now, it's not necessarily a well-angulated rear. Yes. It's a long, long rear. Yeah. And to get that long rear, you get long rear pastance. Yeah. Because it can't have a long rear and a short rear pastance. And right. it should have a very Absolutely. short rear pastance. It's very important. And that's a very short rear pastance that lets them pick up that whole hind quarter and put mm. it down and push. Mm. But now they sort of skim the ground. It's very... <laughs> it's very... It's very now. I mean, and a proper moving dog now mostly won't win because mm. it's not spectacular. The dog's spectacular, but the movement when the judge says take them round yeah. isn't spectacular because sure, you don't got have this other, length. Yeah. Now, people are now all over the world. They're now going off the California kickback, but, I mean, it was there for 20 years. Yeah, but that's just education. It's not like you can't necessarily blame individual people or I say, I don't you know, blame anyone. No, no. It's the yeah. trend yeah. that happened. Yeah. Yeah. A dog had it. Yeah. It looked wonderful. Yeah. Oh, everybody thought we better have that. So everybody bred for the California kickback yeah. and that created a sloping top line. Yeah, right. Because it couldn't happen on a square dog. Yeah. So you got a longer loin okay. and a sloping top yeah. line. Then they went further now to to get that look. Now they've straightened the fronts out again. Right. We're back to – I mean, my dogs had very ordinary shoulders in mm-hmm. the early years. Right. But they had – spring yeah and they had power yeah and they judges thought i'll go with that rather than that so yeah. we got away with not wonderful shoulders for many years yeah. but because is that because you can blame it on being a sidehound thing yes it is a sidehound yeah you know a sidehound shouldn't have german shepherd angulation yes. yes and german shepherd angulation mentally is for everybody perfection yes to get it you get length you have to yes you get these beautiful shoulders you have to lengthen the body yes and the length in the body now they're lengthening the loin. Then they get these great sweeping hindquarters because that's where it has to go. There's yeah. nowhere else for that length to go. So it goes there. But to support that, which is a weakness, you have to get longer rear pastance. You get longer rear pastance, you get a bigger open side gate, wow. which we didn't want, but right. we've got. So as a judge, you, you do look for the rear pastance or the hock length? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For me. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because you vertical, see it as a… Yeah, a vertical, yeah. Um, short rear pastance. Yeah. And the weight on the hind quarter, not the weight on the forehead. And can you feel for that when you're going yes, over the dog? You yes. can, yeah. But you can see it, yeah, as well. Yeah. I mean, all the clever trimming and shaping, and it's wonderful. But you can see it yeah. if you know where it ought to be. You can see it. Yeah. But certainly, I feel for it. And interesting, Lynette and Helen yeah. had a thing, and I don't really why understand what it was meant to achieve. But they had a thing where they used, and it came from Wally Paday, the Scheherazade man, yeah. because they had all his stock, and. Um, they had a thing about flicking the rear hock joint into itself. So they used to flick. <laughs> I never knew why, but they knew why. Yeah. Um, so they had a hind quarter yeah. and they had a reasonable nice length of rear paston, uh, but they used to flick them together to sort of make them almost cow hockey. And then if they went back right, they obviously weren't cow hockey. I knew, I don't really know what it was all about, but they used to do that. They used to go down the rear of an Afghan and they used to flick the... the oh, to the see if it would come hawk. back, as they're judging mm. is what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, right. Mm. To then see so they it, understood what so they were looking for. For them it was a test whether, yeah, whether, yeah, it, was exactly. just, whether it was just whether it was standing there naturally standing or not. Standing there properly with vertical yeah. short yeah, yeah, rear yeah. pastons, yeah. but they used to flick them. Okay. And, um, you know, it worked obviously yeah. for them. They, they knew what they wanted it to do. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I mean, on the whole, and again, this sounds terrible, but I think that's why Sebastian won what he won so quickly and at the Royal because yep. there were just – he was lucky. There were just enough judges around who saw him move 
stand, walk into place, stand there. Yep. Look at that rear and I and all the angulation carried under his body. No yes. weight. Because it's not this big exaggerated dog. No, or nothing like swept back, yeah, nothing yeah. standing on its toes or yep. anything dead level top yep. line. Angulation carried under the body, short vertical hocks, bang, all the weight's there. Yep. And I think he just got lucky. Yeah, he yeah. struck enough judges in that short time he was showing yeah. that said, oh, yeah, we remember they could do this. Yeah, yeah, they didn't yeah. move like this. Yeah. So do you think, there's, is there any um, structural difference in an Afghan that gives us its spring? Mm. Um, yes, because uh, uh, the correct spring, very square dog, yep. very powerful, yep. uh, long pastons, sloping, yes. pastons, sloping pastons, like a Saluki yep. able to slightly turn out in their front feet east-west yep. and still be So you don't correct. want them up on their toes? Never. Yeah. And I, I, I always want this this feet thing. <laughs> the first Kalahora who ever won a New South Wales specialty mm-hmm. was a dog called Rabelais, Kalahora Rabelais, and he was owned by Rick and Wendy Skilton. You know, Skilton's mm. Skilton. Mm. Um, he was the first specialty winner we ever bred, and he was a black and tan, mm-hmm. and he won under Joan Wanacott from Isfahan in England. And at the time we were all terribly, terribly ignorant and terribly, terribly rude because in her critique... She said, this dog has the feet the breed has lost. Wow. And we all thought, oh, what a load of rubbish. Yeah. You know, who do, for God's sake, he won yeah. especially because he's got the feet the breed's lost. She was 100% right. And he had these huge feet and mm. he had long sloping pastons. Mm. Very strong, very sound, moved, not, nothing spectacular at all about his movement. Just straight down, straight back. Nothing at all spectacular. Uh, but... At the time we were rude and we thought, what a stupid thing to say. We learned about 15 years later how absolutely spot on she was. And if you don't have those feet and you don't have that long, long paston in the front and very short paston in the rear, you don't get spring. And she was dead right. Yeah. And then I've upset a few people over the years that I've talked to in other places and they talk about Afghan feet and I describe Afghan feet as feet like a camel. Because you know how a camel has his heels are right down yeah. and he's got a big flat spreading foot because he's a desert dog. Mm-hmm. And Afghans were mountain dogs, basically. There were desert dogs and mountain dogs. But the same thing, that foot's a functional foot yeah. for where that dog had to work. And now you don't get them. You get a little tight, neat, lovely terrier type, isn't it? Lovely, yeah. gorgeous foot. And judges think, oh, look, it's beautiful. Yeah. You get that? You've got a very upright pastern. Yeah. To get a very upright pastern, you get a short front pastern. We want short rear pastons, not short this, front pastons. Yeah, yeah. And awesome. then the way they move, because of the how they but they have to, yeah. they've got these lovely, beautiful, little, yeah. proper, normal feet. And so that's where you get back to the primitive yeah, type yeah. thing. Where feet is such an important aspect. Feet for me are so that terribly is really important. <laughs> But you hardly will ever see them. No, well, and I've got to say, she was right. All those years ago, we were yeah, rude. Yeah. Because we said, oh, for God's sake, what's she talking about? Yeah. But she was spot on the breed. The foot was disappearing from the breed. Of course. Well, you can cover it with coat and of you can course. make a dog appear exactly. to have big feet. Absolutely. So for some people, that's enough. Exactly. Well, for some people, they're honestly, that's all they think it means. Yeah. They think you're looking yeah. at a big foot, but yeah. they're not looking at picking up the foot and finding these big, flat, spreading camel-type yeah. toes. That which relates to spring, which is exactly. a, a hallmark of the breed. Exactly. But that's not that's no blame of, of the breeders. No blame around, on anybody. Because there's, this, this type of information isn't really documented. Absolutely not. You know, this no. is the first time I've ever heard somebody explain... Why they should have had boogie Construction big relating to spring. Mm. And it's, it's such an interesting yeah. topic for me because yeah. spring for Afghans is so unique. And I'm like... Where the fuck does it come from? Well, that's where it should come from. Yeah. And they only had average shoulders in those days. Yes. So if you look at all the early import photos and, yeah. uh, from Afghanistan with the, with the British Army, they only had very ordinary angulation, basically Saluki angulation. There's a slightly more upright but front assist with spring. Right. And yeah. this was the yeah. carriage. That's the carriage. Yeah. Now, our shoulders compared to Helen's and Lynette's were very ordinary anatomically. Yeah. We had a very middle of the road... And is this, would you say, I don't want to be too controversial, but where you get the classically constructed Afghan um, with the huge front and well set under, they don't always have the carriage or the spring when they move around the room. No, they don't. Because they're built more like a German Shepherd. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Textbook. Yeah. Get textbook, 
you get a shorter lower leg. Yes. You can't have long legs and textbook shoulders because anatomy says you can't. You yeah. might get one, yeah. but you breed on and it won't happen. But this is an example of correct construction for the breed and the breed type. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get a wither yep. in an Afghan. You get you want a wither. Right. Um, people don't want withers. Yeah. They want the neck to come in. Yeah. They want this dead, you know, top line goes here, mostly yeah. sloping, no wither. Yeah. Well, you needed a wither in wow. an Afghan hound. You should have a wither yeah. because of that bit. And then uh, that wither, not pronounced and ugly and lumpy or anything, but that wither then had that level into your level top mm. line. That's just how you got your level top line. Can I line. say um, turban would be a good example very, of that? Very good. Yeah. yeah exceptional. Yeah. 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 Um, Hans Lettinen always said, always, that she was his queen. Yeah. Of all the dogs he ever bred, and he was the most famous and the most fabulous guy. Yeah. But he always said, my queen ever of any breed was turban. Wow. Because she had exactly that thing. She had the wither, yeah. then she had the top line, then she had the group, yeah. then she had the tail. Stunning. And he yeah. just related to, to that. Uh, it, and her movement related. You, I wish you could see a, mov- a, a video of her yeah. because she had superb spring, yeah. but no exaggeration. Right. You wouldn't yeah. be a person in the public walking past the ring and say, well, what a strange moving dog. You wouldn't look at it and think it was... Peculiar, yeah. But she had this incredible spring, incredible head carriage. Yeah. You know, just I'm um, it. Yeah. yeah. And she was a queen, yeah. and that was his attitude. Wow, that's super this is a queen. Yeah. You know, and he'd seen many yeah. wonderful dogs, but that was his attitude. On the, I've had a, a few lucky times where I've had a chat to Michael Canalizo. Yes. And um, he once told me that Turban is one of his favourite. Yes. Of all time. Yes. She had an, an amazing fan club. Around the world, yeah, and she was only a little bitch, she was only a or little standard, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah. within even that, I mean, Mosk was bigger than her. We had yeah. taller bitches of our own that beat her, yeah. or competed with her. They were taller bitches. She was just a little, yeah. um, you know, dynamite package. Yeah, and so she was a Sydney Royal Best in Show winner. Yeah. yeah, and she had I don't know, probably at least twelve All Breeds Best in Shows. She won the point score for three years. Mm-hmm. Um, we beat her at Melbourne Royal with Inca. I mean, it's always nice to beat your own famous dog. And Mosk beat her. I mean, they, they were all yeah, very all competitive. Yeah, they were yeah. very competitive. Yeah. But Turban was the heart dog for most people, yeah. and oh. she was just beautiful. Yeah. Just a, And it was really funny because when Bob and Jean Corey came to us to buy a puppy and they decided they'd buy two in those days and I had – I was keeping Turquoise who was um, – Oh, wherever the painting is when we walk out. Um, and Turban was the black and tan and we weren't particularly black and tan oriented and they thought they would buy um, – they bought somebody else. They bought another bitch first. At the same time we had two litters. I can't think of the hell they bought. And they bought Turban. Yeah. And they were just pet – lovely people wanted to show dogs and they bought whoever they bought and they bought Turban because we were keeping turquoise. Turquoise got the reserve challenge at a specialty show where Moses, um, holy man, yeah. under Harry Spiral went best in show. We got bitch challenge with Maros Blue Marion and Turban got reserve ch- – uh, Turquoise got reserve challenge out of 39 minor puppy bitches. What? At that show. <laughs> at that, uh, but she wasn't the famous one. Turban went on and just was famous, won everything. Wow. And Bob and Jean bought her, you know, they like 39, 39 minor, minor puppies. Puppy bitches. Oh, my God. Yeah. Bitches. We got reserved from that. And Turban went on and they Bob brought her to his first – to their first show – and it was Lynette Schilling judging. There was yeah. Shaltara, a very black and tan oriented person. But Lynette was judging because in those days specialties were judged by breeders. Yeah. And um, she, Bob had her on a big long six foot canvas obedience sleeve with a big tie up. And we used to have encouragement classes before we started the breeds classes for the odd colours. So yeah. we had a black and tan, we had a dilute and we had a brindle. They were the minority colours and they never won anything. Yeah, yeah. So we had these classes before we started the show. And Lynette judged and she – Bob going around the ring with Turban on this, you know, huge canvas training thing. And she won the black and tan class. And Ros Basich, um, who was a bachelor in those days, and she was over from South Australia, and Ros came up and said to me, because she was a schoolgirl in uniform when I first met her, because her mother was – one of the most famous Dacky breeders ever. Right. Mm. And Ros came up and she said, 
do you think that man would let me handle that bitch? And I said, oh, I don't know. I'll ask him. So we went to Bob and we said, congratulations, Bob. That was a fabulous win. It obviously means that the judge very much liked her because she's not quite lead trained. Um, would you object if Roz would show her? I oh, know, we'd be thrilled. So it was the old Penworth showground and there was those green toilet blocks, you know, a gents' blocks and a ladies' block and a big lot of area out the back. So Roz took her out behind the toilets, as we always laugh about, with this, you know, canvas obedience lead on a, and a chain, chain. And she came out the other end of her on a, on a slip lead. Yeah. Turban came out the other end after about 10 minutes' work. And we all said, mm, wow. She went in and, of course, she got the bitch challenge and runner-up best in show. Wow. Because she was fabulous. Wow. But if she stayed with lovely Jean and Bob who adored her, yeah. Yeah. she wouldn't have won a class yeah. except yeah. under Lynette Schilling to win the black and tan wow. class. So did Roz handle her from yeah, then on? from then on. Really? Yes. Mm. And then when Roz didn't handle her for a little while for various reasons, Colleen handled her. Mm. Right. And, that, and then Roz... That was funny because Roz put her to Helen's dog that yeah. I wasn't allowed to use, but, <laughs> right. but she accepted her to Kusan and Roz wow. kept two bitches from that. So did that help put Roz on the map oh, in absolutely. Afghans? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. And the other funny story is that Birgit, who was also second generation, who was also a schoolgirl when Stuart and I met her with her family in Adelaide, yeah. uh, she titled the first Dutchie champion, who was a black and tan Dutchie Really? Champion. She used Dutchie. And she titled the first Dutch. She wow. used him when he just came out of quarantine and she titled the first what, Dutch so champion. Birgit's parents were in Afghans? or yes. Really? Yeah, very much so. Wow. Yeah, very much. Well, she's and she re- said both really over continued. Fermoy Vanity Fair, she had a Fermoy, their family had a Fermoy bitch, and she sent Fermoy Vanity Fair over to Dutchie and then she produced the Dutch first ever Dutchie champion. Wow. So Roz was fabulous with the Cami stuff and yeah. Birgit was fabulous with the Dutchie oh stuff. God. So we're That's all some history we're there. dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, Birgit's another one. You've got to look at her second generation. But yeah. wow, yeah. you know, no, we still love there Birgit. and yeah. doing fabulous yeah. things. Yeah. So they all sort of equate with Helen and and still like, so passionate. You know, oh, absolutely, like, fabulous, yeah. wonderful, yeah. and breeding currently. You know, all of a sudden, I'm back breeding fantastic stuff. Her young litter at the moment is fabulous. Birgit's is fantastic. Fabulous. Yeah, and absolutely. she's so excited yeah. about them. But she made up the the uh, the first Dutchie champion. Wow. That is phenomenal. Mm. We have covered so much. And we have, <laughs> i got to tell you, we haven't started. I know. No, it's I like know. it needs to be a two or three part we series. We've covered enough think. and, I mean, you guys would be getting very tired. And well, we haven't even got into current. Like, <laughs> no. We, we haven't, haven't gone beyond 1970 yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, but we haven't, yeah. got, we haven't got out of 70 yet. Yeah. No, I'm no. glad we covered Turban. Um, I really wanted Oh, to look, th- she was so amazing. She was just brilliant. I really want to touch on the fact that um, you've bred three Best in Show winners at Sydney Royal. And two at Brisbane. And two at Brisbane. Yeah. And a puppy in show at Bogue. Yeah. <laughs> and it hasn't been done before, right? Like, or no, or since. Hasn't. It hasn't, hasn't been done. Been. Of any breed. Yeah. Nobody of any breeds yeah. ever bred three Sydney Royal Best in Show winners. They might have bred two Brisbane. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah. Mm. We had two Brisbane Royal and an opposite sex because yeah. they didn't do runner-up in those days. Yeah. We had puppy, which was hawk, yeah. with Roz. And then we had um, three best in shows at Sydney Royal, innumerable groups, and I honestly haven't a clue till I look, and a puppy in show at Sydney Royal, which was Wayne Burton's Ishmael. Right. And um, one other Afghan puppy is one puppy in show at Sydney Royal, which was Gonza's Domino from the Hickeys. Yes. And that's the only other one. Uh, from uh, uh, Helen and Lee. Was there Domino from Helen and Lee? Yeah. I thought it was Gaga. from the Hickeys. No, no, no. Okay, well, that yeah, one yeah. was was that puppy and show then, or only puppy and group? I think group. Louise, I think, got I think puppy group. and show with Maybe. the domino. Right, so that's right, right. where I'm confused. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And then I don't think there's been another Afghan puppy best in show at Brisbane, but there might have been. Yeah, you know, I've lost about <laughs> twenty years. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't think there has, but they were the first of their kind. And when Ishmael went best in show, yeah, um, uh, puppy and show at Sydney Royal, I think it's the same year that Shala Khan for Barry Shala Khan. Went best in show. Yep. I think that judge put the two Afghans through. Really? Wow. Best in show to the wow. Afghan adult and puppy in show to the Afghan puppy. I think that's the same year. And good on the judge for doing that. Because oh, yeah. a, a lot of them they would... They were fearless, you know, the yeah. judges in those days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were like God. Yeah. Yeah. Those all-rounders that yeah. came to us from other places in the world. Yeah. They were just... I mean, everyone went for general specials to see what would win. Yeah. You didn't need to have any connection to the group winners. Yeah. You didn't care. Yeah. 
You went to Sydney Royal well, General Specials and sat in the bleachers to see those judges. How would you even know? How were you guys informed about shows coming up and you know what judges oh, were doing? Through our, through, through our state journals, basically. Right. And the state journal would run an ad for Adelaide, Melbourne, Brisbane, yep. Perth, whatever royal. Yeah, right. Yeah, basically just through our state journals because yeah, yeah. they were very important yeah. in those days. And back in the, the mail entries and all that sort oh, of stuff. Oh yes, yeah. mail entries. Yeah, yeah. checks and, and betting. mail. Uh, betting. You had to be vetted before you could get into the show. You really? everybody there were vet lineups at the shows and yeah. they checked everything to see health and eyes and teeth and oh, okay. all wow. those things. And if bitch is in season, you had to have special permission if your bitch was in season. Yeah. Mostly, you didn't even try. Wow. But if a bitch was just coming into season yeah. and the vet would look at her and say, yes, she's two days in, she's not going to disturb anything. Yeah. Yeah. But basically you didn't even enter a bitch in season in those days because mm. she'd be knocked back by the vet. And that delayed the start of the shows, you know, by an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You had to be that much earlier and get in the line-up yeah. and, and be vetted. And, yeah, no, no bait, no brushes in the ring. Hmm. Umbrellas, we never – nobody had a gazebo or a tent or anything. We all – just had a, a garden umbrella yeah. thing, you know, yep. and and a, most of us used card tables. Would you believe, yeah. as unstable as they were, yeah. we used card tables to put the afghans up on the card table. Is that one person holding the table. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and we just had a mat. We didn't have these wonderful proper mats. Yeah, we'd have some sort of a mat that we'd buy. And you had a spike with spirals yeah. on it and yep. screw that in and yep. chain all the dogs yep. to the spike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've exactly. seen photos of them like I sitting know. or lying I with know. their leads on. That's what we did. Yeah. We all did. That's how it was. And it was it worked. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you compare like today to then? Look, I couldn't show like I used to because I'm, yep. you know, a dinosaur. Yeah. I think sadly today, and I love them, but yep. I think our gazebos are counterproductive for interaction. Yes. Because we all get in our own little tent. Yeah. We might have three or five in our yep. compound, but that's all we talk to. Yep. And you guys are on the other side of the ring and yep. I don't talk to you and maybe we're in the assembly ring and I say, hi, how are you? Yep. Or you come out with tea and I say, gosh, well done, she looked beautiful. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. We don't mix. We don't no. socialise. Well, we don't interact. We don't exchange ideas. We don't talk. I think that's the big thing, right? For all the – even that, that time that I was showing Afghans, like – we never sat down and had this conversation. No. You know, and I, like I look back having this conversation now and researching on what you've done in the breed and, and I think what an opportunity missed and how, like how silly of me of, uh, as a well, new no, person. because the world's changed. Yeah. It doesn't exist. That interaction doesn't exist. Yeah. Mm. That socialising doesn't exist. Yeah. Now if we help a friend and we take a baby pup, uh, a minor puppy into a challenge lineup, say... We yes. don't think, yeah. but the rule now says, well, we can't now judge that person's dogs or yeah. we can't ever judge that dog and, I yeah. mean, the yeah. whole thing's changed yeah. now. Or even if I if I take in a dog that is owned by a person that another person doesn't like, all of a sudden, oh, I don't like you either. Oh, now, that's right. you, know? you have to inherit your enemies and yeah. you're not allowed to make friends. Yeah. And it's all, and as you say, we were fiercely competitive. Yeah. We didn't necessarily like each other, yeah. but we all did get on very well and we all had and a single-minded commitment to promote the breed. Yeah. And you stayed and you watched the dog that beat you win the group and win best in show. Yeah. You stayed. Mm. And that's where you learnt. Mm. That's where you saw, you know, the best poodles or the best corgis or mm. the best fox terriers. You saw them coming into general specials. Now, nobody stays except your own Best friend, yeah. they stay. Yeah. Nobody else stays to watch specials. Nobody goes now. Very few people now go into Sydney Royal on General Special Day, and it was our bible. Yeah, we had to be. We there. Love, I think that's our favourite day of the year. We had yeah. to yeah, be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We had to see what had won and yeah. watch them come through and yeah. see what happened to them. I remember Denise Cameron, Victoria. She had wonderful poodles, mini poodles, and she imported a really famous English champion dog called something Hell, Hell's Fire, which will come to me in a minute, and. The day that we knew Poodles were on at Sydney Royal, we all went in and mm. paid admission to see this English champion dog. Wow. That's what you did. Yeah. He was famous. He came out here. He lived in Victoria. He was going to be shown at Sydney Royal. And we yeah. just flocked in yeah. to see this famous poodle and yeah. to learn from this famous poodle. Yeah. Or I think that's where, like, live streaming now I think will help. <clears throat> well, it's interesting. It's what well, I think what you're doing is really interesting because it's a whole different aspect, mm. and it's very exciting. And you know, as I said, people like me, we are dinosaurs. Mm. Yeah, we've been there, done that. We know all it, and we think, well, who wants to know? Who cares? But it's really 
interesting to me that this is going to, I think, take off. Yeah. Um, and people are going to be asking the sort of questions that you guys are asking. What was it really like? Yeah. Mm. What did you spend? Well, How I've, long did it take? Yeah. Why did you choose that dog? Yeah. yeah, well, to move forward, you have to understand where you come from. And I'm, I'm a big believer in that because mm. humans um, do repeat the same <laughs> the same mistakes over and over. And I think if you don't learn from the past, um, then I don't, I don't honestly think that you can move forward. Well, I, I think it's... I think it's tremendous if this works, and I think mm. it will. But I'm, I hate to think of the dog world as it is now, because mm. I would never would have come into it. Right. And if I had come into so it, but I what never is the difference stayed. though? Um, top level competition. Yeah. Just the nastiness sort of thing. Cutthroat right. competition. Yeah. Uh, the point scores. Yeah. Um, and now people want a winner. They want an instant winner. Yeah. They don't care where it came from. They don't want to know what its grandmother did yeah. in Russia. Yeah. Um, yeah. They want a dog that will stack like a professional and look great in the photograph. And yeah. If it moves off and it's a cripple, they don't care. Yeah. And the young people that are brilliant handlers, I mean, they're fantastic, wonderful, brilliant new handlers, but they're only looking to handle a dog that they know has got a more yeah. than 90% chance of winning. They don't want to take in a difficult one yep. or they don't want to take in with a novice lady that hasn't groomed it properly yep. or they're just not interested. But I, I, th- I really I honestly hope that these type of discussions help well, I think they change will. that. I think, they're re- as I said, I think yeah. what you're doing is really terrific because it if it works on one person, yeah, you've been successful. But even today, like just talking about the first time a brush was allowed in the ring. Mm. Like, who ever thinks of that? They don't. You know, or, they have no or when, idea. When, when and then we couldn't bait. When, stand, yeah. when you couldn't bait, no. it, was, you, it was outlawed. No. You could not, like, it's, no. you know, uh, the first time a stand dryer was used, the yeah. first time a hydro bath was sure. used, you know, like, sure. to understand all these things and, that we just take for granted. And the electronic entries now, they're just wonderful. They are yeah. fantastic. The old yeah. paper yeah. entries were such a nightmare. Right. Well, I used Which to have was to, not that long ago. You know, what, <laughs> three years, five yeah. years or something? Yeah. Well, as a teenager, I used to have to go to the... Um, the post office and do ma- uh, mail your entries. Yeah, mail the entries, but do a money order. Yeah, and exactly. pay for these money because exactly. I never had money checkbooks order. or anything no, like that. No. I have no, to borrow right. them. Yeah. Take you know, ask sure. my parents for the money sure. and go down there. Sure, and, and you know, know, do you you after school chores or something to yeah. have enough to enter the yeah. job? And that's the tragedy that's gone, and it can't come back because no. the world is so different. It yeah. cannot come back. Yeah, uh, but you know, David, back to David Roche, he and all the money in the world. And he had a basket on a bicycle and they lived in um, Melbourne Street, North Adelaide, which is like, well, where Helen lives, Trelawney Street, Wallara. It's right in the heart of the Adelaide best possible area yeah. and their showground was about here in, you know. Yeah. And David used to ride on his bicycle with a dog in a basket <laughs> to compete at those shows. No way. That's what he did. Wow. Because that's how the world was. Wow. You want to go to a dog show? Well, you get to yeah. the dog show. You put your puppy or yeah. his dog or whatever, his kerries and his cockers, never yeah. with an Afghan. Unbelievable. We passed it by then. Yeah. But you, he cycled with a dog in a basket to wow. go to a dog show because that's what people did. Yeah. yeah. And it's incomprehensible. It is, absolutely. And when we when we made it with Zia to Mazari and Joyce Davy and organised all of that, and she was in Mordura, he was in Adelaide, we had a Wazadira in Sydney. She came into season right on Sydney Royal. We lived in a flat at uh, West Pennant Hills above the pharmacy because Stuart worked for Salt, was a pharmacist with Salt yep. Pats, and, but he didn't work in that pharmacy. And we had the the, the, the things here and the underneath is the is the pharmacy, and there were courtyards, little concrete courtyards, and people like us lived in these little things. And we had our first Afghan hounds with this concrete courtyard. But Wazir came into season, and we knew we were so incredibly naive. She came into season just as Sydney Royal started. Joyce had set up for her to be mated to Mazari, and David had said, okay, didn't know us from a bar so, but okay, because he had the Maz- he had the Carloways and Joyce had Tara Barber. This was the daughter and Jabe had said, yes, of course. So I remember she came into season. We were so I, – I die of embarrassment. And we said to David Roche with this incredible English champion dog at his debut, best in show at Sydney Royal, subsequently Adelaide and Melbourne in the same year. And we said to him, look, you know, she's in season but she won't be ready before you go back home to Adelaide. Would you leave him with us? 
in this little concrete courtyard with this little flat, would you leave him with us to do the mating and then, you know, whatever you want to do, we'll drive him back to Adelaide or whatever. Can you believe the yeah. cheek and the stupidity? Yeah. There's this dog worth God alone yeah. knows what. And he was so gracious. He simply said, no, I couldn't just leave him with you. You will have to drive over to Adelaide. I couldn't just leave him here. We were so ignorant yeah. that we thought you just yeah. asked somebody just you don't happens. know at all yeah. who's just gone best in show at Sydney Royal with his <laughs> English champion dog. Would you just leave him here for we two novices to mate him? I mean, that's what the world was like. Yeah. And David was so kind. Yeah. He was so good mannered. He was so, no, no, you'll have to drive her over. So we drove her over three days after, yeah. I think. Three flat tyres later. All the way, you know, us little people, we drive to Adelaide. And um, no mobile phones or anything, but yeah. he said he would be at a dog show at the grounds and if we got there before whatever time, we would, should drive straight to the show. And he lived here and the grounds were there and so we drove straight to the show and we asked somebody and they said, oh, he's over there. And there he was in his gorgeous yellow cashmere shirt, uh, jumper, which he always wore, and he's over there and Masari had just gone best in show. And he says, oh, and he looks at the was, was here, oh, okay, and he said, well, you'll, um, mine's a little blue car over there. You'll have to follow me home. Well, the little blue car over there was a, um, was it an MG? It was a beautiful little blue yeah, thing with yeah. a convertible thing. It was something fabulous. <laughs> so follow the blue car. Yeah. So, you know, we've just driven from Sydney yeah. and in our little MG magnet. So we follow the blue car and we get to Melbourne Street and there's – we're on this side, the road comes this way and his house is here and the road goes that way. So he turns in and his gardener opens the beautiful Adelaide typical antique heritage brush fence thing, opens the gate for him. So we turn and the gardener shuts the gate in our face. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Bang! Uh, so we then park in the street. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we then get out and we ring the little bell <laughs> and we get let in to the, to David's wonderful home and our car's out in the street and we've got this bitch and she's in season and we're ready, dead ready, and David says, oh, oh, well, come on, and he sort of grabs her lead and walks her off and, of course, Wazir was unbelievable. In her time, most of the Afghans were very shy yeah. and she was unbelievable and she says, well, hello, who are you? And she walks off and he gets from about here to the stove and he turns around and he said, oh, you're not bad, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And she was made into Masari and that was not our litter, it was the Amy litter. Yeah. But that litter set the world on fire. Yeah. Wow. There were seven champions out of that litter and five of them were best in show winners. Mm. And the breed was new, wow. very yeah. new and so in Australia. To make it happen, you went through all that. You drove three yeah, we days. Drove there. <laughs> uh, just finished Adelaide Royal. We drove all the way over in our little MG Magnet. We got to the show. He says, follow the blue car. We drive out, turn in, and they shut the gate. Oh, my goodness. But those were things you learned. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it was done. Yeah. And you came in as novice outsiders. You didn't have a clue. Yeah. But that's the way the dog world it was very posh dog world in those days. Right. Very posh. And that's how it operated. That's what happened. Mm. That's phenomenal. So, but it's, fabulous. It's really like... Fabulous. And I, I'll, 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 I'll just tell them, hang yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I'll just tell you about Mazzari and about Sydney World because it's so amazing. So do I. Hello. Yeah, we'll take a wee yes. break. I'm happy to keep going, but I think you guys are probably exhausted because I know I do this to people. Not at all. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> I feel privileged that we've sat here and listened to this <laughs> oh, and been right. able to record it. Honestly, yeah, in all honesty, it's not a privilege. It's um, I'm enjoying it. It really is, and I think we could come back and do more. Yeah. Well, th- I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Write down a stack of stuff that I've touched on that yeah. we haven't discussed. Yeah. Uh, and it's mu- it's 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 too much. I know um, it's too much. I, I've also I just quickly wanted to touch on the fact that you pioneered. Frozen semen in the country. I know, that's something I wanted to, yeah, well, to we, talk yeah. about. Um, Harry Spira was our vet Just and he was the oh, – sorry. Harry Spira was our vet yep. and he was, you know, the most marvellous, amazing person. Yep. He'd been my mentor uh, through judges' training and everything for years. Um, we fell out, sadly, and it was a very sad end to, the, to a wonderful situation. Um, we got a rabies ban imposed on Australia – with a possible suspected rabies outbreak in England. And as I said, nothing could come in unless it went to England first. Yes. Mm. And that was never proven to have been a problem. Yep. But Australia was closed. 
And I think we were closed for three years and it was like talking to Harry, what the heck are we going to do? For all we've just discussed, geographical isolation, yep. have to have new blood, have to have, in every breed in this country, must have new blood, must have a gene pool. What the heck are we going to do? And Harry was just, had become aware of the possibilities of frozen semen. So he found a few people that were prepared to try to do this. Yeah. There was us, there was the Hessians with the gold. Oh, nuts. really? Yeah. There was John Edwards and Philip Warburton with the miniature poodles who you may not no. now know of, but yeah. they were seriously, seriously important. And there was Gene Short with Old English Sheepdogs. Yep. We were all Harry's customers yep. and he said to each one of us, are you prepared to do this, to go with this? And we yep. all said, yes, please, mm. because we had no idea what we would do. If we were close yep. to further bloodlines, yep. we had to do frozen semen. And Harry went to England. We all were in the same collection, the original collection that came in here. Uh, it was done by um, – David Morton picked up on it subsequently at Leicester, but it was – I have to think. Um, and all of them were collected. Mm -hmm. My semen was collected on a pug – for heaven's sake, they used oh, a, right. pug a pug as bitch. the teaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this semen came out here in the one go, one shipment, and we all shared the costs, and we just happened to get lucky that we were the first people that had a bitch to try. Yeah. And the Hessians were only about a week behind us right. or two weeks at the most. Right. And we all got puppies. Wow. Every one of us got puppies in those four breeds. Now, it was amazing, and it did change the world. Yeah. Definitely. What we got were not fabulous, but it was the old thing of a pedigree should work. Yeah. Um, we only went on through one of the males. We didn't ever but breed. Just quickly though, how um, a how did you communicate this to the owners of the stud dog that this is now possible? We wrote um, we, old these old blue aerograms. Right. We wrote and you said this is what we're trying to do in Australia. Yeah. We've selected your male. I chose the dog that had gone best in show at Crufts, yep. a Brindle. Yep, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Cascarat, Montravia Cascarat Hitari, and he was a classic shit Brindle, yep. but he um, appealed. Mm. No, I'm wrong. No, 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 it's generations later. No, I chose Syringa's Abracadabra, who was a black and tan. Right. Um, oh, you saved yourself yeah. from the Brindle. Okay. No, no, I saved the Brindle till later. <laughs> No, he was a black and tan. Yeah. Same bloodline, same kennel and everything else. And he was owned by Jenny Dove, who's judged out here. And um, she was a school kid again. All these women that I'm still friends with that were school kids when we dealt with their mothers <laughs> is really a problem. And we brought his semen out. We got four puppies, um, three dogs and one bitch. Um, they were not really what I wanted and they didn't really blend with what I thought they would with. Mm -hmm. But I had to bring something and he was the dog in England at the time that most appealed. And really, like, the success of that litter isn't really the important part of the no, story, right? No, it's the but fact it is still there. The one mating I did, yeah. put him to a duchy daughter, yeah. um, Paradise Lost, and the one link to the one male is still in my lines. Oh, wow. But there were two other males that one got shown and one didn't, yeah. and the bitch was nice, but she didn't, again, what we're talking about, didn't have any personality. Lovely shit brindle bitch. Yeah. Black bass shit brindle yeah. bitch. But no personality. She always placed, but she wasn't ever going to win. So do you remember how they, um, like they obviously stored it in straws. Did they basically defrost it and then just with a perky, uh, a turkey baster just... No, we did surgical. Oh, you did? Days. Really? I, I still do. Robert Zamet was his yeah. protege. Yeah. He was working with Dr Ian Martin at Sydney University yeah. on it. They, we brought the semen in. They worked with it. Um, they used um, surgical wow. and Harry's attitude and Robert still is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Now, the pipette's wonderful. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> here we go again. We were in um, Scandinavia when Harry got back to me years later and said he wanted a pipette. Would I bring a pipette back? Because they were inseminating all the foxes on the fur farms in Norway. And would I get from whoever, the pipette, to bring back that that worked for and give it a try. Mm. So we brought it back for him and then they started the transcervical. But Robert's still of the opinion, if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah. it. And mm. I still do yeah. 
um, surgical, yeah. except on some frozen semen on a whippet that I brought in. Yeah. And Colleen Roberts was wonderful. Colleen Richards was wonderful. And Colleen worked down at the uni and they had a new whiz bang guy wanting to do things yeah. at, at here at Camden. Yeah. And so we did that frozen semen here at Camden and that produced my wonderful caviar and her brother Yuri. Mm. So that was fantastic. But that was only because they wanted to do it. Mm. Not, and anything else I've done with Rob before or since is just surgical. Wow. And we've never had a problem. I don't have anything against it, but yeah. why do it? As Rob said, if it ain't broke, don't fix no, it. No, I think um, <laughs> the, majority, the majority of um, frozen semen implants are done via surgical. Are they still? I think, yeah. Yeah, I think tran- <laughs> trans-cervical is, is, a new, is a new thing. Um, but we've always, in the meetings that we've done, we've done surgical, surgical implants. Yeah. And we've had super, like, <laughs> yeah. awesome success. Well, that's Rob's yeah. attitude. If mm. you want trans-cervical, he'll do it. Mm. Yes, they've got the pipettes. Yes, I'm I think it's a different skill, though, right? Oh, different, so, different, yeah, a different approach, different timing yeah. on the on the progesterone yeah. levels and everything. It's it's a different. I was skill. at um, Size on Ice one day, and yes. my friend runs at Tony, and he showed me like I was when they did a transcervical. Yes. He showed me the camera. I got to watch it. Yeah, wonderful. And like he goes, watch this guy. This is why I've got him here. Look at how fast he does it. Yes, and he just went. Yes. Straight in, and yes. it was done like straight yeah, away. And I think there's huge advantages in it in yeah. not having to do surgery yes. and all that stuff. Yes, but I just still stick with the yeah. old. It works, so I stick with yep. it. But certainly, Cavi and Yuri were produced down here at the uni at Cavi yeah, yeah, yeah. by transcervical. Yeah, and as I said, Harry got in touch and said, "You know, we need this. Bring a pipette." So I did. Yeah, had to declare it, of course. I mean, it was. Yeah. Strange thing to be importing in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but the, all the foxes were done with it. They wow. Were on the farm. And so that's where it came from? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah and that trip that <coughs> we, were, we were there when he did this and got me to get one for him mm. um, was when Parvo broke out here in Australia. Well, right. It had broken out just before we left. Yeah. Um, and we had a wonderful English kennel mate who isolated and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but they it hit the fox farms... It had hit Australia yeah. and it hit the fox farms in Norway within six weeks while we were still there. Wow. And all the foxes were dying. Oh. In so it was the old thing. Was it a laboratory error? Yeah. What happened? Where did it start? Why? Yeah. Nobody still knows why. Wow. But we were losing puppies here in Australia when we left and when we were in Norway they were losing foxes. Well, horrible stuff. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much more to go through, right? But I'll, I need to, we need to finish it up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Can we finish it with? Because we're going to come back. It's just sure. there's too much. There's too much more it's to, my to, fault, to chat about. To no, no, no. We love it. Like <laughs> honestly, as I said, I'm capable of sticking. Yeah, to we the feel problem. we feel privileged that this. That, Don't be silly. No. Um, but I just want to finish up today with who is the best dog that you've either judged or seen that you haven't bred. Ill curious Hastafer. The black and tan. Right. Um, judged him in S- uh, Sweden and brought his son out. And yes. He can get his type. Yeah. Um, best dog I've ever seen, Afghan. Yeah. It always will be. Yeah. Um, I, I was – because they have a champions class in the FCI, yes. separate from everything else. Yeah. I was working my way through. Stuart had one of those huge, big old, heavy, wonderful cameras. Yep. Weighed a ton. And while he's looking all the time, you know, all he's doing – can't think, can't speak, can't do anything because – Absolutely committed to this. And I had a beautiful black dog come in, solid black, of my type, Brava and Ishmael, Wayne's yep. dog. Um, and he was glorious. Yep. And Stuart's talking into it, trying to get some kind of connection to what he's filming. And he's saying how magnificent this dog was. And I judged him, put him aside. Judge this Hastafer, black and tan, not me. <laughs> And Stuart says into the camera, oh, my goodness, if this dog has teeth and testicles, he's about to go best in show. Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> People next to him happen to speak English. Yeah. yeah. Turn around and say to him, well, thanks very much. You just said really nice things about our dog. Oh. You said your wife was going to love our dog. <laughs> and, no, no, no. and Stuart said, mm, I'm really sorry, she is going to love your dog. She's going to love that one better. And that's exactly what happened. Best in show and runner up. Wow. And he wow. took my breath away. Yeah. If I can find it, I'll find it for you and I will send it to you. It's old, Please. old transferred stuff. But you'll see that dog. I'd love to. You will see spring. Yeah. Mm. Right. You will see absolute perfection. Mm. And he could have gone all day at the same pace. Mm. Wow. And never changed his gait. And when I'd finished judging, 
as it happened. Um, the girl, I don't know, do you know the, um, Elizabeth and Sven? Do you know of them? Yes. And Sven? Well, they bred the, the, the Shaluki, of yes. course you know yes. them. Elizabeth handled him. Yeah. After the show was over, Lotta Jorgensen was there from Denmark. Yes. And Lotta ran him for probably 15 minutes. And Stuart just filmed him and filmed him and filmed him. And then Lotta said, you like this dog? And I said, well, obviously. Yeah. And she said, well, I've got a litter by him in Denmark. Do you want to come and see them? And I said, oh, yes, please. Yeah. And I Christmas? mean, that's how William came. Wow. But he never produced that type, yeah. ever. He went throwback way back. Wow. Ten generations through his mother and produced his mother yeah. always. But that was the best dog I've ever seen. Yeah. I've never seen anything so good in my entire life. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, he's absolutely textbook for me. His movement, it's so good. You, I can't ex- describe it. You'd have to see it if I can. Yeah. Can you send me, do you have photos yeah. of the dog or um, no, anything? No? no, there's lots of photos of him online because he was okay. so famous. But yeah. I don't have any. Okay. I mean, I might have. Yeah. But what I have some video that Lockie took with this huge That'd thing. Lockie awesome. was about 10. Yeah. And he took video right. as well. And I've got it and I don't know if we can make it happen for yeah. you, but I'll send it. Yeah. And when I came home to Australia, I had all these wonderful dogs and I had a, a – Video thing, or it wasn't video, it was Super 8 stuff. Yeah. And a whole lot of people came to watch what I'd done, yeah. see these dogs and bloodlines and stuff. And the um, Hewitts came because yep. they had actually seen Hastafer before I saw him. Mm-hmm. They'd seen him somewhere, wherever they were, as a junior dog or something. Mm. So they came to see him growing up and he had a wavy coat. Mm. Nobody even even could care less, mm. and I still can't, but that's me. Mm. Um, and we put all this stuff on and he, everybody said, oh, wow, gosh, it, oh, aren't they beautiful dogs, isn't this? What a gorgeous bitch. When it was over, and I don't know who it was, it certainly wasn't the Hewitts, somebody said to me, but what about the wavy coat? Didn't that worry you? And I honestly had to run the video again and said, hang on, and run it again and say, oh, yeah, we did have a wavy coat. I honestly was not aware that he had a wavy coat. I wouldn't have penalised him because it was yeah. permissible. Yeah. And there wasn't the presentation there is now. Yeah, that's right. the coat. Yeah. But I honestly came back to Australia not remembering that that dog had a wavy coat. Wow. He was absolutely unbelievable. Now, what but about... the trouble is they all inbred in, inbred. Oh, really? Inbred, right. And what's around now is terrible. Right. Heartbreaking. Okay. Heartbreaking. What about your best, um, the best dog you've ever seen or judged that's not an Afghan? Surely, in all your oh, time yeah. as an all breeds judge, many. right? Yeah, <laughs> there's too many. Yeah, um, like something that, like a dog. Probably that you've... in uh, I, we didn't have Siberians in Australia. Yeah, I did Siberians in America the Santa Barbara weekend when I was doing the Afghan hounds, mm-hmm. and I obviously I'm going to judge Siberians in America. Christ, I better know what I'm doing. Yeah, and I did whatever I did. Came to the to the specials class and had a dog that I thought was out of this world. And he only had half an ear on one side. And I thought, well, he, you know, Siberians fight like demons in the traces, so he's only got a half ear. Shit happens. What does it matter? Mm. And put him up. And then the woman came up to me. Big woman. And she said, oh, I understand. I didn't know. She said, I understand you don't have this breed in Australia. And I said, no, we don't. But, um, you know, I think I've done a lot of homework. And, yes, well, got to tell you, your instincts are right. The challenge, your winner's dog was by him. And your winner's bitch was by him. Oh, wow. And the, and the reserve winner's bitch was his daughter. And, you know, this dog is the best Siberian we've ever bred. So your instincts are right. And I thought, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Bloody dog went best in show at Westminster wow. two months later. No way. With one ear. Oh, my God. He was fantastic. And wow. I think he's probably the best. Anything other than Afghan, mm. I think he's the best I've ever seen. Wow. But I've got a lot of icon dogs in my mind that were yeah. fabulous. And What and about when, in Australia that people could, you know, relate to here? Mm. Golly. On the spot. Mm, on the spot, nothing yeah. off. So many good ones, nothing yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, what I have is these icon dogs. Yeah. And they're in my mind. And when in doubt, when I'm judging, yeah. if I can't, come up with why I should yeah. find a winner. I tend to think of those dogs yeah. and relate back to those dogs. Um, what about, a, like, it doesn't have to be the best dog, but a dog that made your heart skip a beat. Oh, well, again, there's just so many. Yeah. One of them was the German Shepherd, English champion German Shepherd in New Zealand, and I can't think. We're still not can't in believe Australia. I can't th- no, <laughs> I can't believe I can't think, and I was judging 
on the panel with a really, really wonderful, famous German shepherd, Australian breeder called Alfie Seymour, who it was star cooler. Yeah. And I got this dog and I thought, hmm, sending it through to Alf for best in show and he's a German shepherd specialist and am I right or am I wrong? I can't think of the bloody dog. He came to Australia subsequently. So right, okay. Um, and I thought, oh, too bad. That's it. Yep. I sent him through to Alf and Alf gave him best in show. Wow. And I thought, oh, thank you very much, God, yeah. and thank you, Alf. <laughs> and he came to Australia and he titled here in no time. Yeah. He was brilliant. With your breeding, have you um, predominantly focused on specialists or have you always given consideration? No, my, my big winning has been under all rounders. Right. I never win under specialists. Yeah, virtually. Never. Why do you think that is? Then? I have no idea. Because I'm you've totally spoken. Confused. This is the thing for me too, though. Because you've, 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 the big. If I'm perfectly honest, the big surprising thing for me is that you're so focused on the details. Yes. And that, that they've won like the one I said, the black and tan with the big yeah. feet. Under Ronnicott, our first specialty winner. We've had Turban won lots, Mustafa won lots under people like Sheila Devitt. Yeah. Turban won under. Um, Virginia Whittington, Storm yeah. Hill. Yeah. Um, we've had lots of good wins under lots of famous people, but not in the modern thinking. Kalahoras don't win in right. the modern thinking. Right. They don't even get considered. And do you think that's because of the know. side gate or? Probably. And the presentation, the overall yep. image, yep. the show dog. Yeah. Uh, we don't do any good at specialties yeah, yeah, yeah. these days. And it's a long time since we have. Um, God, I don't even remember. We used to do very well under, this sounds terrible, under real specialists. Yeah. <laughs> um, we used to win everything. Yeah. Um, the, the name ones that have written the books and that have yeah. the famous prefixes yeah. and um, the Canabad lady and people like that, and Sheila and, and, and Ginny. And we didn't personally win, but yeah. dogs win one. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. Bread one. But <sighs> what is a specialist? Yeah. How much has a specialist bred? How many times have they themselves competed at top level? I, I th- How I, many times have they won things like the national specialty in Westminster? And ultimately, it's a person drafts. that you personally respect. I think that's the, for me. It is. I think that's the for defining factor. Like and you, I'm not being. I'm not knocking no, no. the current crop. Because, no, but the, uh, but when specialists we, can come in all different varieties. And when we look at this person's CV to do a specialty, and we read that they've had. Um, maybe two champions that they didn't breed. Yeah. Or maybe they bred one litter and they bred a really beautiful, glorious, wonderful dog that's won from that win- one litter, but it's not a specialist for me. Yeah. Yeah. You're at the mine face for a hell of a long yeah. time for yeah. me before you're a specialist. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. you've done things. Yeah. You've used this bloodline and you've tried that bloodline and you've used semen and whatever. Yeah. You've got a track record for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I don't mean to be rude, no. but we haven't seen anyone quite like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would be hard to get someone like that well, these days. Exist. Yeah. See that? And now in the current climate where you're a criminal, if you breed three litters, yes. it'll never come back. Yeah. It that won't was, come back because you're not allowed to be a specialist. That was something I really wanted to speak to you about and I thought, oh, well, it's going for – we're up to two hours and 40 minutes so far. I but, had to be <clears> Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually something that I'm super interested in is, is the difference between now where we are – so confined in space and restricted with litters compared to the old it's days terrible. where you didn't have those restrictions. It's terrible now and that's why we're not getting the depth of quality. Yeah. In those days, yeah. 300 Afghan hounds, yeah. 200 of them under a specialist yeah. could have taken out the top awards. Yeah. Yeah. They were well-bred, they were well-reared, yeah. they were socialised, they were beautiful quality, they had different type yeah. and a judge would relate to the that type. type. Yeah. And those dogs could and did win Big. Yep. And you could sell it to an absolute novice, come in and buy their first puppy, I want to show an Afghan hound, yep. and that dog could win. Um, Margaret Lindsay bought Robert E. Lee from us, and he went this in show under Molly Sharp of Sharman from England. And and she was a nice little nursing sister who came to buy a puppy good enough to show. Yeah. And there was nothing. There was no skullduggery. There was no internet. Yeah. There was no... Facebook, there was nothing. She liked that dog, yeah. rightly or wrongly. Yeah. She gave it a best in show. That can't happen now. No. But back in the day, you could identify a dog from its kennel. Very much so, yeah. yes. You know, Very you much. could go... That's I, a Fabari, that's a Clare, yeah. Yeah, that's a Shaltara, that's an that's Ilkazi. Yeah, and you could go... And, they like them. and you could go, I want, I need a head with 
with this virtue and I know I know to go to that kennel to try and get that. Because it'll produce that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we Unless just can't. You can't, you can't have it, that you now. You can never get that back now. No. And we can never recover that situation ever again where we can breed a lot of puppies, where yep. we can have a big gene pool, yep. breed a lot of puppies, all spoken for, all sold, all safe, yeah. all great, all healthy, and some of them best in show winners. It, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm copying a lot of flack in whippets for breeding so many whippets. Oh, really? Yeah, but five of those yeah. are hooked. Yeah. They're three mm. days old. Yeah, but listen, that takes me to the, the – okay. If, <laughs> if, if, you're, if you have – Three really good bitches of the, the yeah. top quality, right? And you've yeah. been breeding for so many years and you've bred these lines and they produce really top quality puppies at all the time. And then you take three other individuals who are just starting out and they've got substandard dogs. Mm. Who's to say that you having the three litters is hurting the breed? Yeah. Exactly. It's a crime. Yeah. I don't and understand that's what I'm that. Up, I'm very much up against it with whippets at the moment. Are you, yeah. um, in regards to your breeding Afghans and whippets, are you concentrating more on your whippets at the moment? I had been for yeah. the last um, probably six years. Okay. And then I got, you know, inspired to start the Afghans again. Yeah. Mm. And even though mine will be the odd ones out and they won't beat what is current, mm. I just suddenly thought this is ridiculous. I've got it. To he- it's all here, and that's why I bought Sebastian. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. when I went looking for a new stud dog. Yeah. I had to have a new stud dog. I love Phyllis's dog, and I've been so lucky to use him twice. Mm. Um, and I, there's not a lot around. It doesn't mean I don't like them, but there's not a lot around that actually suits me, especially yep. for this square shape yep. and this kind of high movement. And um, so I had nowhere to go. And if I was going to go on with these younger girls that are lovely and generations and stuff and Biophilus' lovely dog mm. and the Colleen connection that connects with all the old stuff that Colleen and I used to do together, mm. um, then I had to have a new dog and that's why I got him. Mm. Uh, but I've only done the two litters mm. and, and they both were in season at the same time so I had two litters three weeks apart which is a pain in the neck. Oh, it's and work. I don't know that I will breed any more. Yeah. I really don't know. Yeah. I am too old. With, uh, with Afghans, is it? I mean, Afghans. It's it's mm. harder to. Do you find it harder to to oh, get much home? Harder, much harder because they're a. Um, we had a, a massive breed. pet market yep. in the glory days. Yes, everybody yep. they wanted an Irish setter or they wanted yes. an Afghan hound. Yep. And we used to say to people that came to us, if you want an Irish setter, you couldn't live with an Afghan hound. If you want an Afghan hound, you couldn't live with an Irish setter. Yep. Loving both breeds, mm. but the independence and the dependence and the yep. whole gun dog versus sight hound thing. Well, when I was young, I I had an Irish setter. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. And they were, you know, wonderful dogs yeah. in their time. And massive entries, as mm-hmm. I said, the two biggest entries at the Royal would be Irish and Afghan hounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were all very good friends. And we could admire the other breed, but we couldn't live with it. <laughs> we could have never. What you wanted in an Irish, you couldn't stand if you were a sight hound right. person. Yeah. What you adored about the arrogance and the independence and the and the painfulness of an Afghan hound, yeah. you, you wouldn't want to have an Irish setter. They're just so different, mm. equally beautiful, equally yeah. everything right. Love them, put them up, do things. But you couldn't, if you were sight hound oriented, you couldn't live with a gun dog as full on as Irish are. Yeah. And if you were as full on with Irish are, you couldn't live with an up itself boring Afghan hound. Yeah. They were so different. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're so different now. I think the Irish also right. has yep. come in now yep. to a more middle of the road dog but I love the mad Irish I love the crazy Irish that you know went round the ring throwing their heads around and looking at you and saying can't you see how wonderful I am you know yeah. I love the really zany Irishness of the Irish yeah. that really you know that's what I love yeah. yeah well I think Wendy no. you've taken us on a wonderful journey <laughs> I've loved I've, lo- I've really loved it I've really well, I've loved, loved it. it but as yeah. I said it's I know I'm hopeless and I know everybody knows I'm hopeless Start me on one thing and I'm off on <laughs> yeah. the others. No, it's been brilliant. Yeah. It really has been Absolutely. brilliant. Um, so thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Loved it. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure.